Welcome to another episode of The Stream Room. It's the podcast about content creation by content creators for content creators. And this week, hmm, what would we do if we had to start all over again from today? That is the question we are posing to ourselves, and hopefully we can get some nice feedback on it. I am one of your hosts, Reeps. Hello, I'm LJ. And I'm Nick Tacular. Good morning, lads. Guten we're, Morgen. How oh, are you all feeling? Doing all right. Oh, we're back in the morning. Yeah. for a whole week. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Oh, yeah. We definitely didn't record no. 11 hours ago with Iona. Yeah. No. This is definitely didn't. What? Definitely. No. Silly, silly, I'll silly. point out, silly. Nick's wearing the same clothes. Pretty embarrassing, yeah. Nick. Oh, my God, Nick. Come yeah, on now. Is it, I, think that's, I think your shirt's slightly different. I think the line's a little bit different from... The mm. other one. Jokes on you. This is shirt 6.3 out of my 8.7 shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so it is different, sir. And I'm wearing a different beanie. Oh, very nice. Oh, look, very nice. And I've got the headphones around my neck because I've got what my wife calls f***y <laughs> ears. <laughs> I like uh, that. That is... I, I like that. That, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> mm. yeah. for, for Christmas, she wrote a note to me because I've, I, cause if anyone doesn't know... As an editor and as a person who lives in North Queensland, I get I got tropical ear a lot from wearing headphones and all that kind of stuff, which is like an ear infection. And it's caused a lot of issues my entire life. And <laughs> my wife for Christmas wrote me a note that said, I love you and your f- ears. And then <laughs> stuck that to the present. And I was like, weirdly the most uh, romantic thing anyone's ever yeah. said to me. <laughs> I was going to say, how long ago was this? Was that, was that the point? Did you propose to her afterwards? Like, yeah, she's the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd already proposed to okay. her, luckily. We've been, we've been engaged for a while. We've been engaged like five years ago, but because of pandemic, we pushed our wedding back by two and a half years. Smart. Um, Smart. I was going to say, what was the present that you got where it said, I love you and your f***y ears? I don't actually remember. I'm I thought it'd be like a good headphone giver. thing. Like, here's some new headphones or... Oh, that'd be smart. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'll, no, she's she's on a teacher's salary, so she ain't getting <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that ain't happening. Listen, if you do need like a uh, you know a, a repl- like a ring bearer or a flower girl, Reaps and I are available we as are. well. Mm. We do yep. you know, accept payments though; it's not free. <laughs> Come on now, <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, but very but you know small payments. Free <laughs> and isn't stupid. That's uh, commenting below and liking yes. and subscribing and doing all the good things that helps us catch into the algorithm, and grows us, and everything like that. So thank you so much for all of that. Speaking of, uh, we will be doing a Q&A episode. So I'm not sure if this will come out later than what it is. But if, if, if it is, hasn't, I should say, please go and check because we'll be answering all your questions. So the more comments and questions that you leave in the comment section, the more we'll be sure to answer on that exclusive yes. Q&A podcast. And not just Q&As and not just questions as well, because we read all of your comments in full. We definitely <laughs> don't skim them ever. Um, and one of the things uh, that I think is really amazing is how much you guys seem to take away from the podcast. And I think a lot of people comment and I read through them and I'm just like so amazed that our incoherent ramblings mean something. Yes. Right. Like (laughs) we get comments from people every single episode being like, hey, you mentioned that thing. I've been struggling with that. Holy crap. That completely makes me feel valid as a human being that I was struggling with this thing. You know, like people, one of the questions we're going to answer later today uh, that someone commented was, oh, people always ask me to play certain games and I play it and no one ever rocks up for it. And you talked about that last episode and it was this and that and that. And I was like, yeah, I feel yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Every streamer yeah. feels you. Yeah. All right. We're yeah. in the We've trenches with you. We get it. And, yeah. and even on Twitter as well, like uh, at least like twice a week, you know, I'll, you know, we'll, I, we'll check the notifications and I'll see that people have been, you know, leaving tweets or reply. They'll be like, hey, so-and-so check out the streamer podcast because this, this and this, or they'll put a tweet out saying you guys helped me so much for this reason. Um, so yeah, even on Twitter as well, we've, uh, we've been seeing it. So thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate that Smashing. you guys love it and and take so much from it. And we really appreciate the the feedback. And every time you guys share the podcast around and, you know, it helps get another listener uh, and audience member for our podcast, it, it really does help. So thank you guys. You're all legends. You're all yes, absolute and legends. as we said, orgy at PAX and you're all invited to, if you suggest a friend and, you know, everything like that, just, just, just spread the stream room around. That's what we want to want to do yeah. is that, is is that, that our own loop? fact right <laughs> is that our own refer a friend link like it's yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. you were invited to the orgy he, get, he gets a yeah. invite to the orgy <laughs> i i asked a question over on stream scheme as a poll saying mm-hmm. would you rather 1000 followers minimum per video you upload mm-hmm. or would you rather always have 100 average viewers on twitch minimum that was a question i asked and um it sparked a, a lot of debate mm-hmm. and i would love to know from you two would you rather always get a thousand minimum 
mm-hmm. on your videos and yet you upload to YouTube? Um, or would you always be able to go live and know you'll get a hundred average? Uh, that's a, it's a really good question, actually. Um, mm. As we talked about last week, oh, sorry, the week before, um, it really uh, comes down to, for me, it, it's hard because we obviously get around that mark as as we speak at the moment. Um, that may be changing, obviously, the pandemic. But I, I think I would like the thousand minimum if it's, you know, a high, you know, they watch a lot of it and not just like they click on it well, for two seconds. That's one of off. the things that sparks yeah. from the conversation. People come from both sides. One person being like, well, 100 average could be 100 lurkers. And then other people coming from the other side being like, well, 1,000 views could be five second views and they click away. Yes. And I have to keep replying yeah. to them being like, the assumption is obviously they're decent views. Otherwise, yep. the entire concept falls apart, guys. <laughs> and they're like, well, you should have stated that. And I'm like, well, if I'd stated that, you wouldn't be commenting or engaging with it, would you? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, boo, boo, boo. General. Very I, general. Yeah. That's I, I really I really like that a lot. because, And I think from the perspective of the YouTube side, if you're getting a thousand views minimum of like full full video views, that's just that's just fast tracking the video to do well, essentially, yeah. for the most part, right? So, which obviously has way more sort of uh, long long term benefits for not just the video but the channel overall because you're guaranteeing every video is going to do pretty damn well, especially if you're starting out. But I know a lot well, of people it's... will see that like hundred viewers every stream, yeah. no matter what. Like, mm. yeah. But, well, if you're yeah. curious, I ran this. I ran this stat a year ago, and like 80% of 7,000 votes came back saying they wanted the 100 average viewers. And then I'm running it again right now, obviously, and we're at like 2,700 votes in the past 24 hours, and um, it's like 60, 70% want the 100 average viewers. But there has been a big swing to people saying they'd rather the YouTube views because I think people are more aware, thanks to content that's been been put out on that channel and here as well, about the dangers of only having average viewers. But it's super interesting because there are still people who are commenting like a thousand views on YouTube on a YouTube video is nothing. And I'm like, and this is why I wanted to ask is because do you guys ever think about how amazing it is? Like last week we released an episode, why streaming isn't a long-term career, Mm -hmm. right? Or maybe that was two weeks ago now, my brain is broken. But, Mm -hmm. and within the first day it had received 400 views. Now that's a lot to me. Yeah. Like I know people feel like, oh, that's not that much. You know, like last night I released a video on Stream Scheme and it's at 4,400 views in 11 hours. But like 400 views on a podcast and on this podcast, on our, on our content here yeah. is massive to me. And I think people have this idea in their head um, and this kind of plays into the conversation we want to have today about if we started in 2022, what would we do, right? Yes. And we are kind of starting a new project in 2022. All of us have started this podcast from zero. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then we've also got our own little projects on the side that we're kind of kicking into gear now. And I think that 400 views is a lot of people. Because the way I always look at it, I go, if I got 30 decent views on a video or 30 average viewers, that is an entire classroom. I loved it when I was in high school and I made a joke and I made the whole class laugh. That was like, I walk out of there and I feel like I've got a giant set of testicles and I'm confident and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. That's right. I just made 30 people laugh. I'm a king, right? Ah, mm-hmm. the class so, clown doesn't surprise me in the slightest. <laughs> well, like, think about it, right? Yeah. Like, it's, like, you feel good about yeah, it. Yeah, no, right? 100%. Imagine, 100%. Imagine if you had 400 people laugh at a joke you posted, right? Or like, or like 400 likes on a tweet, right? Mm-hmm. I think people look at 400 views and they've detached it so heavily. They just, they forget how good it is. Yeah. It is. It, it really is like just a number. It, it, you fall into that thing of just numbers in general. But when you hit something as an average, it's kind of like, oh, that's normal. That's just an everyday thing. You know, I'm catching a bus to work or whatever it is. It's just that's part of my routine. But then when you look back on it and go, I, I have around triple digits watching me play a mm. video game, acting like a fool. It's it. it I, I come from a theater background. So when you look into a crowd, you can tell when there's barely anyone there. When it's 20 mm. people like, oh, <laughs> like that type of thing. But when you get like a sold out house and there's like an atmosphere and a vibe, you're like, oh my God, nerves, everything like that. And it really is just, it's, it's how you relate to it. So to me, the fact that we've done this podcast at the beginning of the year, I think we released our first episode on January 31st. We're now in the early part of May and the steps that we've taken, it just goes to show that what you may think is kind of this pipe dream or something that's like, we'll never get off the ground. Like we had the, those exact same thoughts, but now that we've established a kind of a community, we're building something and people seem to enjoy it. It feels really special to me that we hit 400 views in the space of less than 24 hours on a podcast, as you said. And we're also 500 subs over on our YouTube 
um, which to yeah. me is a crazy stat for something that is so niche and long form content, which is a lot harder to digest than, you know, the 10 minute videos that you see. Yeah, it's it, it it's really wild to me. And I think that's one thing. If we're going to talk about the idea of what would we do differently in 2022, mm -hmm. I think a big thing that I would make sure I did differently is I would constantly think or I'd, I'd make a note somewhere or I'd put a post it somewhere that says one view equals one person, mm -hmm. right? Because I think people look at one view and they go, it's just one view. But it's like, no, that is one whole entire person who could be watching Netflix right now. They could be checking out Demon Slayer. They could be watching so much amazing fucking content that is out there. But instead, they are wasting their time watching <laughs> me, right? <laughs> me? Yeah. What? Why? Yeah. And so then when you think about one person equals one, mm -hmm. and I go live and I'm playing Minecraft and I've got 120 to 150 average viewers, that is 150 people. I couldn't fit 150 people in my house, mm -hmm. right? If I had 20 average, I can't fit 20 average people in this room. Mm -hmm. When you start thinking about it like that, it completely changes your entire outlook on content creation, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, there's there's faces behind the numbers, which I think a lot of people don't realize because it is to them, it could just be monetary. It could just be, as you said, statistics. But when you do see a view account and you, let's just say that you're on three people watching you, five people watching you, 10, 20, whatever it is, those are actual engaged, most part, people that are there for you to support what you do out of their own time. Now, sure, they could be doing work in the background, but the fact that they've got you up at all is such a testament to you and what you are doing that hopefully people don't feel like, oh man, there was only like, I only had three average viewers that stream or 10 average viewers because that, like that, that's crazy. Imagine that, imagine that at all in life. You're walking down the street and 10 people are following you because they just want to see what you do. Creepy, yeah. but yeah. also like, wow, what the hell? Why yeah, am I no, special about this? Yeah, exactly. That's like, yeah, to that, that's you just kind of doing like a, like a circus act, like on in your front yard and 10 people walk by and you're like, you know, actually, I'm just going to lean on the fence and just kind of watch this person for a while. Like, yeah. like that's, like, it, it, yeah, no matter what sort of size you're at, like that's, then people are genuinely taking time out of their 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 day or their night to actively engage with you whether that is lurking and saying or saying a couple things or being super active in the chat regardless of of how many people you're streaming to so it's it's still mm -hmm. it's it's kind of it is when you break it down it is kind of kind of crazy like that um mm -hmm. and then if you really want to get crazy releasing a video and getting 9500 views in the first 24 hour period right and then if we cut forward to where it is now one of my videos where it's 216 days later, it's yeah. not even a full yeah. year yet, and it's at 950,000 views. That's nutty. Incredible. Right? What is the video? Nutty. That is my 32 tips for streaming to zero viewers, which is I arguably would say is my best video I've ever created because it forces you to have a kind of responsibility to yourself where it says at the start, mark yourself out of 32, right? How many of these tips are you actually doing? And then it really drops on, it ends on like a bombshell of like, if you're not growing after a few months, don't just keep doing the same thing. Stop, take a step back, figure out why. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of responsibility, but also every tip is actionable. Yep. Like you can actually like, the moment you're done with that video, you can take each tip and start working on them. And so like, it worked really, really well. Plus it's like a 30 minute video. So even if someone only watches 40% of it, that's still like 13, 14 minutes of uh, watch time, which is huge on YouTube. Um, so like it did really well. And like just some stats from it, 111,000 hours of watch time, right? So that is 111K hours of watch time on one video. What the fuck? That what? is, what? That's crazy. I, I can't even fathom that. Yeah, that kind uh, of- 19,000 new subscribers just from that video. My Damn. God, good golly, Miss Molly. And this, this is and this is why you do all of like the SEO, you know, sort of based content like that has that's going to have the good long term prospects down the track. Well, this is this one's not actually from uh, search. This one is just virality. So this one is purely just like I didn't do any like I didn't do any algorithm uh, or long term stuff for this one. This was purely uh, what I call clickable content or browse content. And the idea is like you release it and you push it that way. And the reason I bring this up is because if I was going to start again in 2022, I would probably do all of the same things I did this time, but I would also probably create a lot of trend jacked gaming content 
that would appeal to a lot of different audiences that shared a niche, right? Mm-hmm. So I would go, here are 10 games that I find I love, right? And then I would make 10 videos about those games in a way that would find people who people would be really interested in. So a recent YouTuber I found is called uh, Will the Wiz or Wiz the, the Wiz the Wizard or something like that. And he just reached 100K. And he's only reached 100K in the last few months because he started releasing these videos called um, Cube World, a fantastic game or a, a, an ambitious game, what happened to it? Or it's like, what happened to Cube World, the most ambitious game? Like something like that, right? And they're like super clicky because people love these games. Like I love Cube World, right? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was super fun. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, yeah, what did happen? I want to know what, what went wrong. And I click, right? And his face isn't in it whatsoever, anything like that. So if I was starting in 2022, I would pick a topic that I like really, really, really love, okay? I would pick a topic I know other people really, really love. And then I would find a way to make a piece of content that was super clickable, that answers a question that they would be like, hmm, I kind of know, but I'd love to get the full deep dive, right? Like similar to how Dream did um, Minecraft uh, trend jacking. If anyone doesn't know, Dream actually didn't get started doing his own content. Dream got started making content about PewDiePie fan content about PewDiePie, his Minecraft seeds, stuff like that. And then just like aggressively sharing that content to PewDiePie's community, right? And he did all of those things to trend jack and get a following. And then he started releasing more content about Minecraft that was trend jacked being like cursed Minecraft videos to watch at 3am. And it's like, he break tries to, he's mining a block, mining a block, mining a block, and then he breaks it and something weird happens. Like rather than it dropping the block, it drops just dirt, right? Or some shit, right? And then he released all that. And then slowly he kind of teetered into doing personality stuff, which was his manhunts. And now Mm -hmm. ever since he's done is only the manhunts and stuff because that's all you have to do. And you have a piece of content like that. Yeah. Um, So that would be, that would be a big thing for me is I do all the same things I'm doing now. But I think early on, I would also pick a niche or a topic that I love and then try and work that into my content strategy to like create very highly clickable, interesting video to a demographic such as like Nintendo gamers. You know what I mean? Um, And I think that'd be my go-to. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the big thing for me and something that we talked about um, two two podcasts ago um, was uh, basically about the career versus hobby. Because I started when I was 19 years old. So, and I was just getting into it as more of like a hobby because my internet wasn't great. And it wasn't until, and then obviously I kind of, within that sort of two and a half year period of me kind of with street, still streaming with bad internet, I was like, I really do like this and I want to see how far I can go, but I need to, I need my internet to be at a point where I can do that. And I need my PC to get, you know, I, I want, there's more things I want to do. So I kind of, I was a bit, uh, not so much lazy, but I kind of slept on it for a while, even though my internet got better. So I think for me, if I was starting right now, I'd say, okay, I have the, technical like you know ability to actually stream and do things in a high quality and make that decision from the get-go i only want this to be a hobby or like do it kind of part-time on the side or i do want to try and make content creation a career and form an actual game plan around that like having that like obviously you've got to test it to see if you'd like it if you're just starting out but once you've decided if you do like it, that's that's I think the biggest question you need to ask, ask yourself and form your game plan around that. Because if you're just streaming as the hobby, then you don't have to stress about metrics or anything. You're just streaming for the fun of it. Oh, the, oh, how how nice that would be. <laughs> but <laughs> you're, you're very right there, Nick. It really is the thing of like you have to first of all associate why you're doing streaming. Because if I was to start over all uh, today from day dot. Uh, the, the reason why we brought this up is because we can see a shift in the pandemic in terms of the world's opening up, uh, people aren't staying as home as often, and, you know, viewership is going down as we've, we've talked about in the past. So is it going to be harder for people to start streaming in this post-pandemic, you know, hopefully it is, uh, landscape? And, and the question always comes up of like, I honestly think, yeah, it's going to be harder because less people want to stay home looking at a screen because they've done that for so long. Um, So really, how can you engage somebody that is not going to be there every single night at the usual times? Instead, they're out and about. What can you do differently? And I definitely think looking now, 
When I started, it was back in 2017. And that was obviously before the pandemic. And I didn't get the viewership numbers that I'm getting in the past two years. And the reason for that is because, yeah, maybe I wasn't good enough then and I'm still finding my feet. And definitely, 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 definitely. But also more people going out and there wasn't that kind of um, routine that has now been established. The most people that come into my stream have a routine of going to my stream as they know they do on this day, this day, this day. So to me, definitely, if I was starting a new as a streamer, I would have a schedule and I would stick to it. I know that that is, you know, one of the easiest tips out there, but not many people do it. Every time that I go to Twitch or something like that, subreddit Twitch, um, that is, there's always somebody asking, should I add another day to my schedule or, or something like that? I can only do two hours on a Saturday, Sunday, and I feel like I can blah, 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 blah. To me, find out what your week is I'm going to be. Find out what your month is going to be and go, I'm going to stream on this day, this day, and this day, and actually do it. Tell people that you're going to do it. Hold yourself accountable because it is so easy in this world to go, ah, uh, you know what? I'm just not feeling it today, so I'm not going to do it. If you're serious about it, um, you've chosen it as a career or something that you want to diversify in, please, please go with the schedule. Tell everybody about it and stick to it. Go live when you say you're going live because people will be waiting for you if you give them that investment. And not many people do that today. That's just like, I'll go live when I want to. We can no longer do that in this post-pandemic world because people will be like, oh, I didn't know you're gonna stream today and I, I just, I, I didn't have the time. So, all right, see you. Maybe next stream I'll catch you. Yep. That's just me. And it, and even though you, a lot of people might might follow a channel and, and you know, turn the notification bell off on Twitch, mm -hmm. um, but there's a, there's a large majority of people that leave it on. And that yeah. even if they may not click it, they'll still see that notification and that will pop up uh, when you set your schedule, uh, when you use the, the Twitch schedule feature, like people will get notified when, you know, when the stream is like coming up. I believe that's correct. I don't, I don't want to be wrong about that. I think, I think so. they do get notified about that, like not just when if you go live. If they've got the bell turned on, they'll get notified. But if yeah. they have the bell turned off, they won't ever get notified. Oh yeah, yeah, no. yeah. If they, it, yeah. yeah, as long as they've got the bell turned on, like they still get notified about like your scheduled stream that is coming up, um, mm -hmm. for the for like that time. So you know, I people will be I waiting have to there. Go to the schedule and click remind me though. Oh, do you right. have to click that? Okay. I think you have to actually click remind me to get a reminder for your thing, which I, I tell people every time I post my schedule, you can go to this link and click remind me, and I've only got three people who get reminded on each stream yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've been saying that for for months now i think the conversion rate of people willing to do that is really low like in my head the way i look at schedules and stuff like that really just comes down to pick a time pick a day stick to them because people like myself have no idea what's going on anywhere else or whatever yeah, yeah. but they'll sit down and have the same routine right now and they just constantly just fall into the same stuff right if you're there and that you were there yesterday and they are going to be there here as well then they're going to go all right this was fine Right. Yeah. Um, and that momentum is, is, is huge. Right. Like, yes, yeah, the yeah. formative, it's the formative patterns. If, if you go, I'm going live tomorrow and then you don't go live for whatever reason could be out of your control. The people that you said you're going live to yesterday are going to come back and be like, Oh, well, they're not live. Um, I'm going to find somebody else. And then you may lose them to that other person. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like it's a competition, but you, you do have to kind of back up what you say. You, if you give mm. somebody a promise of what you're doing and when you're doing it, you have to stick to it because they're, they're, it really does come down to how much do you trust the person that you're watching and how much do you want to invest in them if they're wishy-washy. And yeah, I know that I wouldn't. That's yeah, just me. And, it, and, you know, it can be really hard to be forced to cancel uh, a stream that you'd planned for, for whatever reason. Like you can only do so much. You can only, you know, do so much to inform people in your Discord, you know, to, you know, you click uh, click the little slider on, on the Twitch schedule, say canceled and say like, oh, I'm sick or whatever. But yeah. at the end of the day, most people, they're just going to be like, oh, so-and-so's not live today. And then they're not going to, they're not going to put a second thought into it. They're not going to mm -hmm. investigate why. There's no, there's no feature on Twitch to, you know, on just to kind of plaster on your channel. I'm sick today. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's, it's really, really hard. Um, I mean, you can, you know, you don't do as much have good, good communication with your community, but yeah, a schedule is super important. The routine, like, like these other boys are saying, the routine is the really the strongest part. And I didn't have a routine for a long time. Um, and then when, once I did is when I actually started to see proper growth. People yes. knew mm. what time every week I was going to be live. Um, so that was, that was the, the big sort of turning point for me. Yeah.
Yeah. You have I think, to I think that is a I think that is a big one. I think it's also something that people get told and they say things like, Oh, but I have work and stuff like that. Like I want to do it, but I can't because if I set my schedule, then I lose out on shifts or it, my shifts could just throw things out like that. And I kind of always just like like to throw a tidbit when we talk about schedule in to say like Look, look, at the end of the day, and, and this is people who are console streamers as well. And this is for people who, you know, uh, have uh, mental health issues or have uh, other things like that. This is for literally everyone who has a specific or special reason why certain advice won't work for them. This isn't me trying to be harsh. This is just a hard fact to hear. And that is viewers don't care. Mm -hmm. Like viewers, they just want content. That's all it is. That's not selfish of them. That's not bad of them. They just want content and they don't care about the fact that you can only stream from a console. You know, they don't care about the fact that you you can't watch your VODs back because it embarrasses you. And so you never find out your mic sounds bad. You know, they don't care that um, you have your work schedule like is so messy that they that you never have a same schedule every week. And that's, again, not bad of them. They just want good content. Yeah. Right. And the problem with that is, is that all of the reasons, I'm not saying excuses because they're not excuses, they are reasons. All of the reasons why you can't do the things that are the best for growth, no one is going to kind of listen to and go, okay, then I'll 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 just wait around and put up with it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're competing with people who don't have those same issues, right? Or have their own issues that they're dealing with and pushing through. You know, like when I started, I worked three jobs while also streaming uh, consistently five nights a week from 7.15 till till like 10 and then I got off stream and I went and did uh, tech support and VSEO from 10.30 till 1 a.m., right, for a company. And um, I, is that good? No. But I knew that I was competing with people who were putting all of their time and energy into this and pushing through like the things that were holding them back. And maybe you can't push through. Mm -hmm. But that means you have to take responsibility and focus on the things you can do, which is why when I say if you don't have a schedule and you can't have a schedule because of any of those number of reasons, well, then release one YouTube video a week. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that has a flexible schedule to it. You may change your work shifts every week, but that's fine because all you need is two hours a day to work on that video and then you'll have a video out. Correct. Right? Correct. And that's not me saying YouTube's better. I'm just saying if you personally cannot do something that is a best action for growing on a platform like Twitch, well, then you have to take responsibility and do a different action to do those things. Yes, yeah, you're right. With yeah, whether you're full time or part time or you're working casually, there's always at least one time every week that, you know, that you can just dedicate to working on things outside of that, you know, uh, to, and that could be for any job, you know, you're not, you know, unless, I mean, look, unless you're like, you know, you're a nurse or a doctor and you're doing like massive 12 hour shifts every week, it obviously makes it really difficult. But for the most part, you know, you're not, you should, well, you shouldn't be streaming, you know, five, six nights a week. Um, mm -hmm. We'd hope not. But so you, at least there's one night where you can spend, uh, you know, like just kind of ch relaxing and working on stuff in the background or even on a weekend, you know, you set if you're working full time during the week, just set a, a, a few hours on the weekend. Like, all right, I'm going to go about my day, do my errands. And now I'm just going to work on some stuff. I'm going to, you know, make some TikToks or this and that. And yeah. you, don't, you just you, you do you make what's best for you. And then you will you will find hopefully some traction and growth just from for doing the best that you can with your situation and going from there. It's all it's all about accountability. Um, you can't give accountability to a viewer. You can't give accountability to a mod. You can't give accountability to anyone who is a sub subscribed to you on whatever platform. Because when it comes down to it, as these two, two boys have been saying, it really is the fact of how much do you want to do this and how many excuses are you making not to do it? And you've got to find that line in, in the middle of going, I'm making a lot of excuses for something that I could easily have done. Instead of watching this TV show or going to see this movie, I could have done this, that, or the other. And I'm not saying that have no social life, have anything like that, but just know if it is, if you want it to be a professional thing, but you're uh, treating it like a hobby, then it's never going to be a professional thing. There's that old kind of saying of like, dress for the job that you want, not for the job that you have. So mm -hmm. if you are competing against people, it is competition out there. The, the eyeballs of the people are going to go to the one that they obviously uh, gel with the most. What can you do to make sure that people who do want to watch you have that avenue? If you're live on Twitch, that's the only time that they have to watch you, right? 
unless they go to the VODs. I don't think a lot of people go to the VODs unless, as we said, it's a storyline or you're well established. But if you have a YouTube or a TikTok or an Instagram, they can easily get their daily dose of Booty Man 69, you know what I mean? And go, great, I've got that for the day. They're doing this today, fantastic. So give yourself avenues outside. Social media can be the devil, don't get me wrong. But if you treat it like a business as well, like my Twitter account basically for me is, this is what I've got going on. This is some of my thoughts and opinions, nothing personal. Um, and then this is times that I go live. That's what I use it for. And people know that that's what my Twitter is. So they go, oh, it's not live today. He's doing this instead. Because if you just leave them in the dark and you give them no reason why you're not streaming when you were supposed to, that is a big mistrust. And that to me is just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find somebody else who actually is kind of upfront with me. So I definitely would be more proactive in the social media kind of environment to let people know exactly what's going on. If they don't seek it out, at least it's out there for them to consume. Yeah, if mm. you have it out there. That's why you wore, wore a, you wear a blazer on stream, right, Reaps? Just, just to make yourself look pro more professional. It's like, that yep, is correct. Pick, yeah. That's One it. day I will be Jeff Bezos and, you know, just really... <laughs> yeah, you're just tricking really, everybody that you're more professional than you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, see everybody's so. numbers, you know, not yeah. real people. That's me. That's, that's, that's going to be me, baby. I'm excited. I, I, I'm going to say, I'm probably going to say something that's going to seem a little controversial to a lot of the viewers, but Ooh. I would I would honestly focus solely on YouTube for the first few months before I start would start streaming. Mm -hmm. If I had to restart, I, yeah. would, I would just, I would decide what I would want to form a channel around and think about the kind like have a serious think about the kind of content that I'd want to make and I would just I would get myself into a rhythm of making YouTube videos and then slowly start you know easing in some streams throughout the week start with one stream a week then start with you know two two streams a week as I'm as I'm going through and as as get the schedules start to balance so I would I that's honestly what I would do I, I would think that's a really yeah, because as you said, like when it comes to YouTube, you can see yourself presenting, but you have to watch back the footage when you edit it. You know what I mean? Like you can see the idiosyncrasies, you can see the vices that you have, every little thing in between. And if mm. you do as Nick says, which is like start off with YouTube, form exactly what you like, what works, everything like that, and then go to Twitch, then you've kind of, I feel a bit more, it'll still be nerve wracking, don't get me wrong. But you'll be like, okay, I know that I do this on camera and this is how I look. But if you go live, it's kind of like that analogy, Nick, of like, okay, um, instead of doing acting classes, we just want you to go out there now and do a one man, a one person show on the stage, which is more daunting to you, like going straight out there or having lessons and then doing a one person show. I don't know which way, which way I'd go down. And that's exactly what you said, Nick. It's YouTube refine yourself and then go live because it's a live experience and it's an interactive experience, which you can't really get on YouTube, but you can learn how to present. Yeah. I think, mm. I think that's kind of part of why I said what I said in terms of like what I would start with, because in the grand scheme of things for me, and sorry if I seem distracted, by the way, we've just had a bot attack on stream scheme. So I'm just cleaning up. Oh, oh gosh, I'm sorry, um, dude. <laughs> nah, it's nothing. I don't care in the slightest. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it, it's literally this, I just gotta go through and click some buttons. Yeah. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I said that I would start with the YouTube side of things and prep those and do like the 10 videos and everything like that. Because I think in the grand scheme of things, when you, when you look at Twitch, I've said this a thousand times, and that is you'll be much less stressed as a streamer if you aren't actually a streamer if you're just doing it for fun mm -hmm. like you can stream as a career but if you're if it's a single cog in a, in a much bigger career like a youtube channel or tiktoker or any of those things then streams are much more fun and a lesson that i've learned in a video that's coming out soon on ssn which is like it's called like um the one lesson i learned in the, the one lesson i needed to learn in two years of streaming or something like that and it's literally just if you are having fun it's probably likely that people in your viewer list and your audience will stick around longer. That's like a hard fact of it. Because when someone's having fun, usually it's fun to watch, yes. right? Yes. Which I know sounds really simplified, but it's just the truth. Yep. Like that is just a hard yeah. truth of it. Um, And I, I guess to me, I look at it and I go, yeah, I, I just, if you just have fun, mm -hmm. if you just have fun, it is weirdly easy to kind of continue to grow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's what I think, like, that's that's what, like, uh, EO mainly said as well, that she would, mm. she would, like, if she's not having fun, then there's no point of her doing any of it. There's no point mm -hmm. of her doing that piece of content if she's not enjoying herself. 
if she can't have fun with a certain game or whatever, she's not she's not going to do it regardless of how popular it is or regardless of of anything. You know, I've yeah. had people say like, oh, you know what, like like Dark Souls is really good. Like, you know, you'd probably get a good viewership from Dark Souls, but I didn't enjoy Dark Souls. <laughs> So yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to like, I'm open to possibly trying it again. Maybe it's like a co-op thing, but for me, it's like, yeah, I, I want to make sure I'm enjoying it and I can really fully, you know, stretch my legs in whatever I'm, 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 ha- I'm going to be playing. So, and yeah, LJ, you're right. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have the fun. Um, And I think, but I think a lot of that comes from, especially if you've got financial stability outside of streaming, mm-hmm. whether that's from, you've got a YouTube channel or you've got a, a job that, you know, that you're working part-time, full-time, and you're able, you, you, you are already sort of sustaining yourself. So you're not putting the, any monetary pressure on streaming, and you're just yeah. kind of focusing on fun, enjoyment, how am I going to make, you know, the stream entertaining. That, I think, eases a lot of, a lot of anxiety and worry and allows you to kind of be, be a more sort of natural, relaxed, fun yourself, essentially. Yeah. yeah. No, 100%. And I think recently... I've had a lot more fun on stream because to me, I kind of just like look at all of the stream that I'm doing and I go, this isn't going to be some big, crazy YouTube video. This isn't going to be my, my whole, per- my whole, like my self-esteem isn't layered into my view count. Yeah. Right. That's my big thing is my self-esteem is not layered into my view count. Um, and it doesn't matter if I'm at a hundred viewers or 150, it makes me feel better. But what it, what matters most to me is my chatters and whether it's fun and, and EO when I were talked about this, obviously last night, but like, I just think that when I take all of my brain and go, yeah, I don't really care mm. as long as I have enough money to fund my life, which thanks to the stream scheme channel, I do, then it's okay. And I think my, a lot of my fears about the losing of viewers made me have less fun, obviously, which yeah. we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people listen to me sometimes and go, yeah, obviously this all makes a total sense, but I'm like, hey, well, you you wait until you wait until you're in this situation. You know what I mean? And you won't have a YouTube channel likely. Like, you know, like I think the majority of people won't end up having a channel like I do, where I can have this sustainability and safety net, right? Um, but at the same time, you could if you if you started if you're starting right now, why yeah. not? Right? Like, um, I know a lot of people don't want to be YouTubers, but I think that's mainly because in your head you probably don't have an understanding of what a YouTuber actually is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people see YouTube and like it's hours of editing and it's all this stuff. And it's like, well, in the grand scheme of things, once you kind of get a feel for it, it's actually not that much work. And you release one video a week or every fortnight. And then you just kind of go and do your own thing, come up with some other ideas and get up at midday. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) That's it. Or, you, you know, you get to a point, depending on what kind of content you're making and the editing style you're going for, you know, if you're depending on if you're starting to bring some money in, you know, like obviously now and before I say this, we've said this in a podcast before, you need to learn how to edit yourself and you need to edit mm-hmm. for yourself for a while before you do this. But yes. obviously you get to the point of, of you know, hiring an editor and all of a sudden that frees up your time even more to brainstorm content, film content, and then, you know, do other stuff on the side because, you know, you've, you can offload the editing to, to someone else. Um, and then that kind of, that's, that's like, I think it can, can be a big turning point for, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of good growth, um, because you're putting your time and energy. What's an interesting video idea I can do? What's a fun stream that I can do? Um, and I think like, that's been a big, that, that was a massive turning point for me was, um, when I was able to bring one of my mods easy on board and like start editing TikToks for me. Um, and after, you know, we didn't see much growth on TikTok for a while, but now, like, we're, we're seeing that. It's like, you know, every, videos consistently only used, used to get, like, between 200 to 350 views around there. And now we're hitting minimum, like, four, like four to 600 views every TikTok. More of them are popping off um, even, even, like, even more uh, regularly. And so it's it really, it, you, you need to think about how you want to sort of tackle that and just kind of go, go from there. Consistency. Consistency yeah. is key. Uh, I yeah. think people, as we've talked about many times, is that people start something, then they don't finish it. They're like, oh, I didn't see those results. I'm just going to stop now. The thing is, you, you can't go into it doing anything like that. In, in any aspect of life, you can't just be like, oh, it's not working out for me, so I'm just going to stop immediately if you really do care about it. 
because mm. obviously you've got to get into as as we've learned from uh, a stream scheme and everything like that it takes like 20 to 30 videos to obviously get into the algorithm and under youtube to understand what your channel's about or what you're trying to do you can't mm. just release two or three things and go oh i only got x amount of views on it i'm a failure because obviously there's people who've been doing this for years and years and years who are obviously going to get those clicks, who are going to get those um, suggested videos. And it's up to you to work up to that. And I know it's very hard to say because, you know, I'm, I'm not an established YouTuber at all, but I still do it because I do love doing it. Um, and I need to take more responsibility for myself to go, what is the plan after streaming? And there's a whole episode about that. But if I was to start over, it's to really um, put down on a piece of paper what you want from content creation. Do you just want it for the money? Do you just want it for the fame? Do you just want it for the sponsorships? Do you want it for just to, you know, obviously um, expand your skill set? Whatever it is, write it down and go, what's the best way that I can achieve it? And in a way that's not going to hamper me or make me feel depressed about it, but give yourself realistic expectations and possibly goals as well. Don't go with the goals of like, I expect to get 10,000 subscribers in three months or whatever it is, because you can't control who subscribes in the scheme of things. It's up to the individual. What you can control, as you know, is releasing a video a week, releasing a video that you've got to try a new editing uh, technique on, or you've got to use After Effects in this video, or you've got to use Photoshop for your own thumbnails and make it like really spectacular. Something that is viable because I guarantee you one of those things that you learn as a skill and put towards whatever content creation it is, one of them will do a lot better than the other. And you can then pinpoint, oh, my thumbnail was freaking amazing. That's why people clicked on it. That's why I had a high retention rate. But, oh, wait a minute, my, my click through went down because of this reason. And then you go, actually, it's because of that. You've got actual seeable evidence that gives you a, a starting point to go, yes, this is how I can head down. I enjoy doing it. And now I know what I want out of my content. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And like, you know, even, even if you, you make a, you know, you make a video and you only get one new subscriber, that's mm. one new person that liked the video enough to want to subscribe and possibly, you know, and, be, and have the possibility to see more. See um, more is the big thing. They're yeah. subscribing to see more. Even like, and well, with Twitch follows yeah. as well, the same thing. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like what we were saying at the start of the podcast, right? It's like, you, you know, you, you go into it, as we all said, even just then, Reaps, you said it, but like you go into it and you're setting expectations super high and of course you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. um, but like as well, the see more thing is really interesting because lately I've been thinking a lot about YouTube releases and my experimenting over the past month, as everyone's heard, you know, I released one of my best videos to perform in the first 24 hours at the start of April. It yep. was three mistakes, small streams are still creating, right? best literally first 24 hour period performed the best out of any piece of content i've ever released and then i released four to five more videos back to back and they were the worst five i've ever released and i've talked about why that was and um the experimentation behind it but then today i released another video and it's done really really well in the first 24 hour period right and i have a theory that it isn't just your current upload you're doing right but you also need to be thinking about what your next upload is. Because the way I look at it is that impressions snowball. Mm -hmm. So if I get, you know, a, a, a thousand impressions on a video, then those impressions click and they like that video and they subscribe or just in general, they've liked it and they've watched it long enough that they may not have subscribed, but YouTube goes, they watch this long enough. YouTube knows, you know what I mean? And then what happens is next time I release a video, if it isn't on the same target towards those impressions, that audience, right? If those same people aren't into it, well, then we end up causing an issue where it'll perform worse. And I think that's why understanding your audience is so powerful, right? Because if people watch, let's say, um, a video about Pokemon, right? We release a video where we're trying to guess all 151 of the original generation of Pokemon. And then next week, we release another video. What are we going to release? Warzone? Probably not. Are we going to release Animal Crossing? That's better and closer, right? But are we going to release Super Mario? Again, that's closer, I think, to the right demographic. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to release something that's like, um, hey, here's me trying to guess Gen 2 of all the original Gen 2ers, right? Yep. The connection between those two videos is stronger and therefore the impressions will snowball better. Now, if you want to be variety, I think variety as a new creator, that's something I would have do, I would do differently as well, is I would redefine what variety is. Because in my head, I, I see variety as niching to a key demographic. So 
as I've talked about it before, Nintendo games. We chuck Nintendo at the top and we say, what is the audience demographic and what do they like? If they like Pokemon, they probably like Mario. If they like Mario, they probably like uh, Zelda. If they like Zelda and all that stuff, well, they're probably also kind of interested in Animal Crossing, right? And you can kind of like from there go, okay, well, what other games do people who like these ones like? Okay, probably Stardew Valley. Mm-hmm probably Hollow Knight, Mm -hmm. um, probably Minecraft. Like you can kind of connect it all, right? And I wouldn't, and I would say that is a variety streamer. Yeah. Some people might be like, no, that's a Nintendo streamer. And I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 that is a variety streamer still because they're not doing the same game. They're but they've niched down to a key demographic. Yes. Whereas I think a lot of people go into this with the idea of variety and they do fucking like all sorts of shit. Yeah. But Reaps, I don't think I I think you have a niche Reaps. Yeah. I think people would look at you and they wouldn't say Reaps has a niche. But I actually think you do on Twitch have a niche of games that you play. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think horror games are a big part of it. And I think the people who like horror games also like watching your just chatting sections for the same reason, Yes. right? And I think there's a lot of little things that connect as a mind map for your content. And that was, that's something, if I was starting again in 2022, I would probably define what my mind map of games is better because currently I did have a really good mind map of games when I started kind of instinctually because I made content that I would enjoy and therefore my audience just became people like me, right? Like people like me who they liked watching, uh, they liked they liked Darkest Dungeon. Mm-hmm. They liked Stardew. They liked all these games because they were in the same kind of funnel as what I liked. Yeah. They liked RimWorld. They liked it, right? Because when you think about it, something that people are like, I can't define my audience, but I've talked about it a lot before. And that is you are your own audience, You how you absorb it. But I, so that's something when I, if I started again, I would probably define that and I would stick closer to that. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't stray out into doing all this wild stuff that I've done experimentation, which was fun, but I would probably be a bit more focused. And my new YouTube channel is probably going to be a lot more focused moving forward. So I've got an editor who's come on who honestly, guys, I'm so excited. Holy yeah. shit. He's yeah. so fucking funny. <laughs> like, and he's also, he's got a, he's got a brain for it. He like, yeah. he thinks about all this stuff and he's like talking about session time and stuff, which, oh man, I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> And so I'm really, really keen because we're going to be a bit more targeted, mm-hmm. right? It's like we're releasing a video, which is me trying to guess all 151 Pokemon while I was live. And then we're going to edit the next one. And it's a Mario Party stream that I did with you, EO, uh, you Reaps, EO and Cresman, right? Yeah. And I probably won't release Hitman or all this other stuff. I will probably focus on my mind map of my audience. Yeah. Indie games. I, I do 12 minutes because that's an indie game. I would do... Uh, maybe some loop hero. I would do It Takes Two with Claire. I would do a lot of those things that kind of fit my mind map until I have a, an established audience over there that I could maybe spread out a bit more into personality driven stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of creators, they start with the personality driven stuff rather than starting with uh, an audience demographic, which is part of the trend jacking. Dream wouldn't be this big if he'd started with Manhunt. Yeah, Dream mm-hmm. would be nothing. But he start, he didn't start with his own abilities he started with pewdiepie's abilities and then the minecraft community's abilities and then he seeded himself into it yeah that's a big one i would change that's smart that's that's extremely smart because yeah it really does come down to if i did start again obviously right now i think you're right in terms of i would go down the horror variety stream um because one there's a lot of online multiplayer games that you can always get value out of you know you're dead by daylight um your friday the 13th evil dead the game's coming out this week as well um, and then you've got the individual uh, or indie horrors, which are, which are always good. And they always like about two to th- two to four hours, which is a perfect stream time to do. You mm. get through a whole story in one go. And if you don't, there's the cliffhanger. You know what I mean? For the next time, it's like, what's going to be the ending of this? And there's always the, obviously the AAA titles of Resident Evil, Silent Hill, all that kind of stuff. So if I was to start again, I would go down that avenue. I know that a lot of people... Um, don't want to play horror games, but they want to view somebody else playing horror games so that you can all be scared together. It's like this community feel. So definitely go down there. Obviously, interactive games is something that I would also look at if I was niching down in terms of you got your jackboxes, you got your marbles. But the thing about that is there are the diehards that will only watch you do those things. You know, you've got the, if you do a marble stream, there's always that person who wants to get to the top of the leaderboard who will only watch you for marbles. And if you don't do marbles, you're no longer valuable to them. But you know, that's, that's with everything. But I think you're right, LJ, in terms of you do have to niche down even on Twitch, even on YouTube to really establish an audience. And then you can do personality driven stuff. Once they get to know your personality and hopefully vibe with it, they're a lot more 
I would say, open to trying different ventures of content creation, uh, whether that's games, whether that's in real life stuff or whatever you've got off the top of your head to really go, yeah, I, I like this. I'm going to stick with it. Mm. Yeah, I it's I had to, I kind of um, found myself a little bit again after like the last couple of months where, you know, everyone's been kind of going through, you know, the whole sort of um, pandemic reaction. And the way I kind of saw that is like, you know, for the, for, you know, before the pandemic, you know, to sort of twi like Twitch has always kind of been this sort of like the, the, the sort of the rising and the lowering of the tide. You know, it's like some, some periods of the year, the tide comes in, right? And that would be from more people trying streaming, but also more people coming on Twitch to, to view. And then you've got mm -hmm. the quieter periods of the, of the year where the tide kind of goes out. Some people might stop and give up or, you know, and like, oh, there's just, you know, there's just less viewers. This yep. pandemic was almost like, just like flooding it was like yeah. the tide came in and started to flood onto the beachfront and so there was a ton <laughs> of people you know coming onto twitch to both stream uh and to view so there was yeah. this massive boom and now we're on that flip side where the tide's actually gone low we're seeing all the seaweed the crabs are coming out of the sand it's 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 a wasteland now uh yeah, like, yeah so very it, much so yeah mm. and so and this period i think this kind of these last few this last couple of months kind of helped me remember w who i was and what my content actually was and i feel like i'm in much better sort of rhythm of things now and i kind of had to come to terms with myself and be like i think i just want to impart Yu-Gi-Oh more regularly into a lot of my content not just regularly onto my stream but kind of putting dipping my toe into like making more Yu-Gi-Oh content for for YouTube and doing more short yeah. form for like TikTok and shorts. Like I realized that the passion for it is burning so strongly for me that I like, and people respond to that. People respond yeah. to mm. that really well in the streams. And I, we've noticed really good viewer growth and retention, the same people coming back from those streams and coming back for other games. Like there's a, there's a good handful of people that came in from Yu-Gi-Oh that come in for, for other games as well. <laughs> So, and I, and, and that's just from me having such a passion for it and my personality really coming out during, uh, during th those pieces of content, during those streams. And, and that's really resonating with a lot of people. And I think it, it it's not something you can do what you like. And like I said, you, you mind map your games, you do all your planning, but when you put it into action, you, that's when you got to, that's, you decide like, is this working? Is it not? And you keep doing that yep. until you really, really find what works for you. But don't just do it once and then and then give up. Be stubborn, all right? You got to be stubborn. Be like, I'm going to try this again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's I think yeah. the big one for me is like I think, but for, for I think reaps for both of us. We've just been incredibly stubborn, and we've that's why we've kept going for so long as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, very stubborn. And I, I think you, you you raise a good point there is that we have talked about obviously the pandemic coming to a close or not obviously in the height that it was, and a lot of people are going out. So that you are going to see, especially because I believe uh, Northern Hemisphere is going into their summer and we're going into our winter that a lot more people are gonna be out and about in international audience. And we know that um, American audiences really drive the viewership on uh, Twitch. Um, obviously the Spanish um, as well, I believe, but they're going into like a kind of big summer thing. So we're gonna see it kind of wash out. But we know that come near the end of the year, it's gonna pick up again. So it's this is the dip and then it's gonna trend back up. So really it's, it's up to you now to go, do I want to start when it's trending back up or do I want to start when it's down? Because then I can establish an audience, try things that I, I don't know if I'm going to work or not. And then when I get to that up period on Twitch, I know exactly what's going to work for me or what I enjoy doing because I know that when you start off and you're a bit awkward, then people tend to click off. But if you've got this down period and you know that there's no added pressure of, I should really be making uh, the most opportunity I have out of all these uh, viewers that are currently online compared to last month, then it really does kind of shift where you see yourself. And if it were me, I would definitely start now because if you always put it off for the future, there's never going to be a right time to start. I mean, there may be more advantageous time that you, you put yourself down to, but there's never the right time. The right time is right now, honestly. So I would definitely be putting myself out there, trying different things, trying different scenes, all that stuff and building a base now, even if it's a small base, even something like three to five people who are regulars, because once it does trend upwards and you've got an amazing community that is so supportive of you, people really uh, shine in terms of they find a community. 
They're there for you, but they're there for the community as well. They've got to chat to these people. They've got to see the chat, you know, cycle up the screen, especially if you've got it on your stream. So be sure that you are uh, implementing what you want because that's going to make people stick around, not just you, but the community that you build. I think people are there more so for the community for most streamers than they are the streamer. Yeah. I actually think that a lot of people don't realize that um, the reason why they struggle to grow is because you need a few people in a community before people are willing to stick around. Right. Like, and that's like the hardest thing is those first few people. But if you can get those first few people in from there, if you're just making good content and focusing on community, it's pretty smooth sailing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, I apologize. I've been kind of distracted, but officially the server is clean. Beautiful. Uh, no longer Excellent. are we getting hit. There was a lot of spam bots back to back. The bot got most of them. Yeah. Um, but it was a new one. They've changed it. So everyone knows if you have a big server, you get hit by these ones which are like discordgift.ru Russian link. Um, and for a while there, they stopped, which I think maybe potentially the reason they stopped is because of certain things going on in the world. .ru mm -hmm. was not able to be sent. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a new one has dropped by and it looks like they're coming from a, a, an, a, an Eastern Asian country uh, URL now, which is great. Lovely. Uh, so I've just had to add like 30 new fucking Discord links uh, to our blacklist, um, which is fun. But mm -hmm. otherwise, we're all good. So that's one thing I do if I started in 2022. I just get stricter bots. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't really preempt it. You kind of have to like set it up as best you can and then hope that when it comes through, you're awake to catch it and then add the new one to the blacklist. Yeah. Because if anyone doesn't know, a lot of the bot attacks are real people. Like they have lost their account. So like they join your server, verify as a real person. And then like six months later, they lose their account to a hack. And then their real account who's already verified as a real person hits you with all the stuff and you can't, you can't deal with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is funny. Okay. Can I ask you guys, how early on as a streamer? So say you start tomorrow. When do you create a community server? Oh, that's a, that's whoa, that's a really good question. Um, I don't, I don't think I'd start it straight away. As much as I'd like to start implement it straight away, I don't think I would. Uh, I think it's really I would have to feel validated in terms of making a server rather than just like a kind of shell of a thing. Because I know that a big part of it is if you go into a server and there's been no activity on it for a few weeks or months, or you know, there was made however long ago. That's kind of like, am I walking into some sort of a trap here? Um, I would definitely do it once I've established more of the base. But what I would do is um, in terms of community is I would easily make a Twitter. I want to easily make an Instagram account. When it comes to Discord, I would at least say I would want a, a viewer average of around, you know, 10 or so, because then I know that people are going to go in there with the right reasons rather than just joining and then leaving it as a, a blank uh, thing on the uh, right hand side of your user list. But that's, yeah. that's just me. You, uh, you, you, you need to wait until you have like at least like, you know, like, yeah, six to 10 people begging you to make a tis Discord server, like, please. Um, and I think for me as well, um, because I was, uh, I think, I, and I think this was just the problem of me not kind of treating it as a hobby to begin with was I made my own Discord early on, um, after like a, I think it was like a couple months of, um, of streaming and, but I would spend a lot of time in, in other discords and I wouldn't put enough time spending it in my own time, like yeah. hosting in my own discord. And that's something I'm still getting better at personally. Um, recently, I saw a friend of mine on Twitter. They tweeted like, hey, like I see all the I see all these discords that have, you know, the, 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 it's popping like the community is is like always posting and stuff like that. It's like, how do I get that? You know, and then I, I, but not many people actually commented from when, when I saw it. Um, but it's like, yeah, there's p generally people that aren't sure how they nurture a, a community or could discord in a community from from that perspective. But it comes down to just a lot, at the start, they're coming for you, right? Yes. Until that community starts to to really form, so you have to be in there. You have to be the one posting and kind of initiating that conversation all the time. And um, so it, yeah, it's really. It's 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 a bit more work than I think a lot of people realize to kind of actually well what you have to do to kind of keep a Discord going like eventually you know the you, you know, your community will start to sort of get ingrained with it and they'll post things and people will respond to stuff but you have to be the one to really to, you're, you're you're the leader of that you're the captain of that ship you have to kind of get everyone to kind of feel comfortable enough to to get involved and and that kind of thing and you know. 
there's there's different approaches. Um, some people, you know, will do Discord only game nights or movie nights yeah. and stuff like that. There's all different things that you can do to kind of help nurture that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think for me, I started a community straight uh, community Discord. I built it straight away. That's a really important thing I want to mention. I built it straight away and had it ready because I, in my head I had this idea of like, man, I'm getting like ten viewers here, ten viewers there. This blah blah blah. blah. I, I want to make sure it's ready in case uh, I have a really big stream. And I had it already. And then I had a really big stream in my second week where I got to like 25 average viewers playing Jackbox and community events. And that on that stream, I was like, hey, join the fucking Discord. And I instantly had like 15 members, mm -hmm. right? Which is a lot. And then I was like super active in there. People were posting fan art, which is funny. In my first like month and a half of streaming, I got more fan art than I think I've ever had. I have some really talented artists in my stream. But like that first month and a half of a new community was so hype that people were like super like ingrained. Like they yeah. loved it. They were yeah. posting like all this stuff. Um, and I think that's another thing, by the way, if I was starting again now, I would try put an emphasis on doing events that had fan art and memes be created. Yeah. Because yeah. this is a different theory and I'll, I'll mention it in a second. But essentially, I, I would have my Discord ready to go in case you have a big stream or in case you have a stream where a few people rock up and stuff like that. And then you can push people to it. It's not like, oh oh, I don't have it ready. Just come back next week and I'll have it ready. Um, but here's my theory. If I was starting again in 2022, I would put an aggressive emphasis on encouraging memes. Yeah. I yeah. think the best way to make someone feel like they're a part of a community is for accessible memes. And we talked about this a little bit with EO last night, but I didn't really mention it properly. But mm -hmm. I think when everyone can rally behind an individual meme that is easy to get involved in, like simple, then they will always come back. Yeah. Right. If they yeah. can join in on the stupid copy pastas, if they can understand a concept, right? But if they can't understand those concepts or they can't join in on those memes or it's kind of isolating or it's tough, they will they will not come back. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't understand. They don't feel like they're a part of it. It's hard to be a part of it. Um, but I feel like that's one thing. And hear me out. I actually think that TikTok and YouTube are your best friends when it comes to creating memes that will last a long time. Mm -hmm. right because if people join my stream i think there are some memes that they would never ever be able to understand for example they'll never really understand what gary is right they'll never understand what he is or they'll never understand what the chaos alerts are or or um or for example maybe they'll understand the fact that my community has an 8 out of 10 meme that we rate everything to be 8 out of 10 right yeah but the 8 out of 10 they can understand that because i start every single stream like that right and that's easy for them. Like, oh, he starts every stream like that. Okay, that's that's fine. We understand that. But they'll never get Gary. And that's because they don't have the ability to go back and be a part of the creation of the cursed gnome, mm -hmm. right? So instead, if I had a YouTube channel where I was had a video of the cursed gnome being created, it's very easy for someone who wants to watch me and understand my community memes. They can watch my content and they'll, or they'll kind of have an update, right? Yeah. They'll be indoctrinated from the past, right? And I think that's one of the things um, that Ludwig does very well is he has these community means that are very accessible, but also you learn and understand them because they are on his Reddit, which he does his, or he used to do Reddit recaps a lot, which were really good at harnessing those memes and being like, look, everyone in the community has these ideas. Ha ha ha. They repeat the same stuff. Or he does um, meme reviews of his Discord back in the day. And I think that's a really big thing is having these abilities for people to understand the memes of the community and get involved in it. Um, I apologize if you can hear weird noises behind me. I've got a man at some reason since 9 a.m. this morning, he's been trimming hedges in the rain. It is <laughs> raining right now. And he has been trimming hedges for the last three hours nonstop. And I'm losing my mind. I can't stand it. I've, I've, I've told you boys that there's construction work that's been happening at 7 a.m. in the morning each and every day. And they, they do the thing where you hear the construction noise between 7 and 8. And then they're silent for the rest of the day. And you're like, why do you do it later in the day? With people? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just it's fine. It's fine. I just... <laughs> Bring it up, Bring it up again. If I was to start a gang, I would have lived... Out of the bush where there's no construction. There's no, there's no, you don't have to worry about license plates. <laughs> he's, just, he's, just, he's just really passionate about like just maintaining that hedge. He just yeah. he needs to rain or shine. That's it. Yeah, I need that baby. I need <laughs> Blowing that baby. my mind. But yeah, I don't know. I think yep. I think my theory these days is that I think community memes are incredibly powerful. Yes. Um, and you can't force a meme. No, this no, is a really big thing. You cannot force a meme, and you can't 
And if you try and push back against a meme, usually you'll just lose people, mm -hmm. right? You kind of have to, as EO said last on last night's episode, you have to embrace kind of the chaos and losing that control. So if you're a control freak of a streamer and a meme starts and you don't like it, you can wean it, but be aware that you can obviously hurt your community by doing that. Yes. Right? Yes. Whereas, like, for example, some people don't like the, I said on this last episode, some people don't like the we are a church, this is a cult, people are legs banger meme that started in my community. But I'm not going to stop them because it's clear that a lot of first time chatters think that's fun as well and they're getting involved in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's, it's, they're kind of like, and people are like, oh, I don't get it. I don't understand why that's funny. It's like, well, you weren't here for it, which is why it is. Yeah. Like I have regulars who aren't a fan of it because they weren't there when it started. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they will happily join in on the same level of spam for the chaos alert yeah. because they were there when the chaos alert started. Yes. You know what I mean? And so you can't push back on these memes. You kind of have to like roll with them and encourage them and lose your control. But you also have to be aware that some people won't like it. And I don't know, it's just... I've always kind of understood this and I've always kind of had this, but it's only recently am I realizing you have zero control over it. Mm -hmm. You can't force something. You kind of have to just roll with it and hope that it works out. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's it. Like I, 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 a big one for me was when I did my Mass Effect like series playthroughs. It was my first time. And I made uh, the most cursed shepherd that you ever see. He's just a red tomato with a white mustache and white eyebrows. Um, and I thought he was the most beautiful thing I've ever created, but everybody in chat thought the, uh, the, thought the, thought the opposite. And that was like, that was the meme that started of me defending my tomato man. And then everybody just trying to shit on him and tell me that like, no, he's like ugly as hell. What do you mean? And so that was really fun. And that kept going and that led to merch being created of in honor of him. And that was, yeah. that was fantastic. Um, one thing that I saw happen recently, I don't know if you, you guys caught this or heard about this. Um, CBC did a uh, sponsored stream and I don't fully understand what happened because I, I tuned in after it, the sponsored segment had finished. Right. But there was, he did like this tour, this like digital tour of something and his community would not shut up about talking about how the, the public li the public library is underfunded like from the government and something like that. It was constant through the entire like the entire rest of the stream what was it, the sponsorship i don't i don't know that right, was the okay. thing i had i had no idea and i couldn't couldn't get much context really money it. well spent yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was yeah. it was it was it, ins, it was like popping off something happened and i you'd have to probably go back and watch the vod it was from like last week um and yeah it was his community were just on it like the tts was just the same TTS or like variations of the TTS about how like the government is un like the public library is underfunded by the government or something like that. They just clung to it so, so incredibly hard. And he's just like going like, yeah, he's kind of playing it off a bit. Like, I don't understand, but at the same time, he's just kind of like, this was, this was amazing. Like people have just really grabbing onto this. Yeah. It was just nuts. Mm -hmm. nuts. That's good. If anyone doesn't know who a CBC is, by the oh. way, that's Cardboard Cowboy, I believe. And he's yes. a fantastic yes. content creator and streamer. Very unique. I would kind of consider him similar to yourself, Reaps, where he's built his own CGI kind of world. Yeah. That he can kind of just appear in and, and do his thing. Also, an amazing musician. Yeah. Like, I yeah. didn't realize I joined his stream the other day, and I, I guess it was him. Like, he has, like, a song or an album released, and it's, like, a, kind of like a comedy song, but it also fucking slaps. Right. Well, he I know he's, like, um under the, the Nappy Gaming uh, corporate, uh, the freaking streaming team, which is run by T-Pain. So he's, like, he works with T-Pain to do songs and stuff, which is I think phenomenal. It was, I think it was him singing. I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't there long enough. I, right. I, I, yeah, some people, I remember some people talk about this in chat. They weren't sure if it was him singing or not because, like, he was showing off a new song or something. But, yeah, no, his all his music is original music. And, like, I, I just sit in there, like, even the music he would play on his, like, his uh, his BRB screen. I'm just like, I want to add this to my Spotify playlist. Like, it's just, <laughs> it is so good. And he does, a, like, he's great because he, he rotates. And this is kind of like, we, we've spoke about this before about keeping content fresh. Like, he rotates. He has this uh, on. He has this train, right? He sits in a train car, and he has a he has a character which the chat TTS talks through, and that character changes. So he had an old character, and then he wrote a song about remembering that character, and now he's got a new character. And eventually, the same thing will happen, where this character will just become a memory in a song, and then he'll just it will be rotated to someone else. Like he's just he is phenomenal. 
Yeah, he, mm. he does some storyline based streams where it's like he goes for like, it's one where he was stuck down a well, that was a whole story arc. And there's one where he died and came resurrected. That was a whole story arc. So he kind of does the things his content is about a beginning, a middle and an end, and then the next chapter as it were. So he's got like a rabid following, a rabid fan base and they're like meme, meme central. And definitely you can see why he's gone so far. I, I was going to say as well, in terms of community and harboring a community is uh, uh, moderators. Picking your moderators is one of the things that uh, looking back on, I'll be like, I need to be so in tune with who I pick. Because I think when you start off, anyone as a moderator is good because you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, just give it to them. But then you realize if you do get bigger, if you do get, maybe they weren't the right fit for you. And I know it's hard, but I would say that if I was starting over, I don't think I'd need a moderator straight away because uh, for me, it's like, there's, there's not so much that I have to deal with when there's only X amount of viewers. But when you do, do get to that point of like, I need to harbor a community and I need to focus on the game, but not have to worry about what's going on in chat, a moderator is the biggest choice that you can make when it comes to how people are going to view you, especially when new people are entering the chat about what is good and what should not be going on there. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Mm. I um I think uh it'll it's also it's good to wait because by you those first you know those first maybe couple months or so um you like you set the tone of what you remove and what you keep and like you're you're the you know you're the sheriff right and there's no no one there's no one with a sword in chat that can can do anything it's just you so yep. people understand what's allowed what's not they understand the tone of the chat. It's just like, oh, this person's a child, gone. You're gone immediately. Mm -hmm. So pe and people will start to really understand like how you your your channels run and what the you, you the community is going to be like. So by the time that you find someone who you think is going to be a good fit for a moderator, they already understand your channel a bit, rather than sort of like you're just you know modding someone who's just became a regular or like a mate from straight away, and then just there's just this big disjointed thing. Um, or especially like someone who has maybe moderates for another channel or another couple channels who maybe run a bit differently. So then they bring that predetermined knowledge to your stream that might not be the way that you want it to be run. So there's yeah. a lot of things that that you really need to to keep in mind. Um, and I think you probably, I think you you honestly wouldn't even need to worry about a moderator until you at least started maybe averaging above 20 to 30 viewers i think like you wouldn't i don't I, I, would you guys would you boys agree around that point i think i think having someone uh is really helpful because i have a theory that one of the reasons why small streamers struggle so much is because they aren't used to the aggressive multitasking that streaming is mm -hmm. and one thing uh is like if someone's causing trouble in chat or if there's issues and stuff like that you as the streamer shouldn't have to out loud acknowledge it yeah. One of the mistakes I make is I acknowledge it quite often. Whereas if you have just someone who's going to handle it, then you don't have to acknowledge it. And therefore 99% of people will never even notice it happens. Yeah. The moment you yeah. give the attention to a bad egg or even just a problem, people will notice it and they don't move on from it. Whereas if a moderator just removes it and you keep doing your stream, no one will even no one will even see it happening. So I actually think that if you can have someone in there kind of aware and doing their thing, that's kind of like mm -hmm. really helpful. But if you can't, you know, yes, you can just alt tab and deal with it and stuff like that. But Real quick. if that, that little break does cause uh, a little bit of confusion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think there's like a, a, a right amount of people to be in your chat to do it. It's really just when it becomes too hard to handle um, or you just need that extra bit of relief, as it were. Um, definitely. It's, it's a big thing. And you also, if it, we were to start all over again, we've talked about kind of like niching down and everything. Um, but I think it's something that we need to touch on more is the fact that you also need to be representative of what the community should be when coming in there. Because as mm. we said, if you start off and you get people watching you, like anything goes, I'm just glad people are watching me. But there will come a time where they will go a certain way. And if you don't stop it, they expect that each and every stream. And if you suddenly then go a few streams later, actually, that's not kind of the vibe that I want, then you're kind of misleading them from the get-go and that again is not not a good thing to have happen. Obviously it doesn't have to go to that extreme and it may just be something very you know small and indifferent, but you really do have to be a representative of exactly what you want from your stream because after all, you are in charge. 
you are in charge of the kind of people that stick around the what what they say if you agree with it because if you if they say something and you don't really comment on it or nothing's done about it and it may be seen as you know not what you're representative of then that does reflect on you that that is you that is your channel that's what people who raid into are going to get uh so really just be cautious of um how you project yourself and how you're seen by other people uh, i'm not saying mm. that as a scare tactic but really it's just in terms of what do you want streamers to come into and uh what, what kind of vibe do you want because you have to implement it pretty much straight away yeah mm. i've yeah. I struggled uh, from being too nice from, mm. from for, for a long time. I just struggled from being too nice and it took me a long time to find my footing and, you know, be get to the dealers like to realize, yeah, I, this is like, this is like my channel. Like if, you know, if you're being a dick, I just, I'm going to get you out. I'm not going to try and be nice about it or beat around, but like, ah, oh, maybe you shouldn't, you know, like, let's just not say that, you know, and just give mm -hmm. people the chance to try and, walk over me it's just like no just remove the problems that's it yep. like you know we, we like we've spoken about it's like sometimes you can counter troll to a troll yep. yes. um, but if someone's just like just being an idiot or just being you know it's not fitting your vibe or whatever like just get rid of them that's the biggest thing people and i was i did the, i made the same mistake i was too afraid to remove someone when they just weren't fitting the vibe mm. of the channel and they, it was just kind of they're being a bit weird and it was making things a bit awkward i was I was too nice, and I I, I, I would let it would let them slide because they technically weren't really doing anything wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I think the biggest thing to remember, if you are starting, going to restart now, or even if you know you have started already, is just you, you set the you you know, you know your vibe for the chat and the channel, and stick to it. Don't don't be afraid to remove someone if they it's just, if it's just not working for you for you and your community. You want yeah. to make it like a fun place. Everyone comes in, they get the vibe and, and you know, and it's a great time. Definitely. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. It's funny how like the episode where we're talking about if we started streaming in 2022, like right now, what would we do? It's funny how a lot of what we do is kind of, we've talked about, right? Mm. Like we've covered a lot of today's episode, but we're kind of reiterating it and discussing it and adding little bits and bobs to it. And I think it's really interesting because I think that no matter how much I tell people, this is how I do it. This is what I would do. They still say things to me like, yeah, what would you do now? I'm yeah. like, no, I don't think you understand. Nothing has changed really. It's just, yeah, it'll be harder now because there's less people of an influx coming into Twitch. But really the, 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 the pathway and the strategy is kind of still the exact same as it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. There's not been any aggressive updates to this industry yet. And I think that a lot of the time people think, oh, that was a year ago. It's out of date now. Yeah. But the reality is it's like, no, nah, dude, it's the exact same, right? And I've got this video coming soon and it's called how to actually grow on Twitch in 2022, right? And it's not like, hey, here's an actionable tip, do X, Y, Z. Instead, it is a, like a, a from, from a marketing approach where it explains uh, the three key principles of growing any business, any brand, any platform, no matter what it was from the perspective of streaming, okay. right? And, and that is you have three core pillars that come step by step after each other and you have to follow them, right? And that is first, audience. You define who your audience is, which I've said a thousand times and people still are like, are people they, who talk. <laughs> um, and then after your audience, you've got reach, which is your question of how much reach you have and how you're going to reach your audience, which is why it comes next. And then you've got retention rate, right? And between the retention rate and the reach, you have a smaller pillar, which is called churn. And the idea is, right, if you run through them as a marketer, you go, okay, I'm going to get an idea of who my audience is. And that's not just saying 24 year olds who are male and like Twitch. No, it's saying, okay, I am looking at 18 to 25 year old males mostly. I think a lot of them have a part-time job. They've played video games since their entire, like, you know, since they started out with the ability to do just that. And if they're 18 to 25, they probably had a PS2. They probably had an Xbox 360. They probably had these similar experiences playing COD and blah, blah, blah. If they want to be a streamer, well, then what are their day-to-day -day worries and their emotions they go through, mm -hmm. right? So, oh, they're really worried because they don't have enough chatters or they have insecurities about whether or not they're not cut out for it, right? Or they have these preconceived notions about content creation. And you really dig deep into understanding your audience. Yeah. And you can do the same thing for people who aren't education-based. You can go, okay, so this person who is 18 to 25 and is a male, I want to target is someone who plays Nintendo games. Okay, if they play Nintendo games in the 18 to 25, these are the OG Nintendo games. They probably love Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. They probably love Majora's Mask. 
They probably played Pokemon Stadium and have really good memories of that. You know, like you can kind of break these ideas down and get an idea of who they are. And then you can start appealing to them because you know where the joke will land. Yep. Right. Yep. Like a comedian doesn't walk onto a set and just start making random jokes. Right. If I was doing a set in Louisiana, I'm not going to walk out and start insulting them. Right. I'm yep. not going to walk out and just start straight up just being like, you guys ever hear about those Louisianians and how they just like to have sex with gators? How weird is that, right? Like <laughs> you got to know your audience if you're going to tell a joke. Yeah. Whereas I'd go to Florida and I'd make that joke or I'd go to New York and it might land a bit better, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, not saying it would, but maybe it yeah, would. Maybe. Um, <laughs> and, and, and like, so you, you know your audience, right? So you define your audience and then you think about because you know your audience, you also know where they are, right? And this is a big one I don't think people think about. They go, my audience is on Twitch. I'm like, okay, but are they on Twitch most of the time? Mm. I don't think they are. If I was targeting people who loved anime, I think they probably spend most of their time on Reddit or the Crunchyroll comments, Yeah. right? Yeah. And th like, I'm not gonna go advertise on the Crunchyroll comments, but I think that's an understanding of who they are, right? So you, you, you're gonna make content and then target the communities around said content, like going to our anime and posting how you've created the top 100 anime of all time, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this. no one can argue with this. Or you tweet it and, and you put it in the, the Twitter communities for anime, right? Like you target where they are because they're not on Twitch. They're on other places and then you build an audience and then bring them over. Sometimes your audience is on Twitch, yeah. but it's yeah. likely it's much harder to reach them. So that's your reach, right? And so for us, when I say make YouTube content, that is how you increase your reach. And then after reach, that smaller pillar is called churn. Now churn is the amount of people you lose from your audience versus how many people you gain. So if your reach is you increasing the amount of people who will see your content, churn is your, the amount of people you're losing. Yeah. Now yep. you need to keep your churn lower um, uh, lower than your reach. Otherwise you start losing viewers, of right? That's just a core concept of it. How do you do that? Well, you either increase your reach or you increase your third step, which is retention rate, right? And the hardest part about retention rate is the fact that you physically and in every form of you, you cannot force retention rate to increase. Yeah. The yep. only way retention rate can increase is to have that person want to keep coming back. And the most powerful way to do that is to give them an emotional response to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if someone has an emotional response and they watch, so for example, my video last night, my video last night has 130 comments on, on it overnight because I went into that with the idea of, I want people to have an emotional response where they realize this is me being very genuine. I want them to go into this and go, okay, this is something I really reflect with. Every point in this video is a fear that I've had and he has addressed it. That was my goal, right? I wanted to be incredibly upfront with them and, and connect with them and give them that. And that has caused a huge number of comments, right? Anyone who watched that video and had that emotional response will likely click my next video. That is just a hard fact of it. Even if it's a negative emotional response because your haters will still return. Yeah. Yeah. So I know my audience on stream scheme. I know how I'm reaching them with YouTube and Twitter and all these things like that. And then my churn over there is at a certain rate. But if I have my retention rate higher then I have my churn and I have my reach continually growing, then I will always grow an audience, right? And that is the core principle to literally every single channel, every single platform, every business, everything. Like that is, that is all you need to think about. And then you apply it to your own concepts. Mm -hmm. And if I was starting again in 2022, I would probably put that up on a massive fuck off whiteboard with the four different um, columns and go, here is everything I know about my audience. Here is how they spend their day. Here is what they do the first time they wake up in the morning, right? Because what do you do when you wake up in the morning? You probably take a pee. Mm -hmm. And then if you're like me, you open up your phone and you go, oh shit, I didn't get any, I didn't get uh, any new views. I didn't get any new Twitch follows right? If this is like your headspace is you want to be a streamer, you probably pull it up and go, how did my TikTok do? Yeah. How did my YouTube video do? Right. And then you feel kind of shit because when you're starting out, you don't get much. Yeah. And so if I'm then going to go, how do I increase my reach? I'm going to make a video about that feeling, right? I'm going to make a video entirely about the feeling I have in the morning when I wake up and see my TikTok didn't perform while I was asleep. Mm -hmm. Or then you go, okay, well, if I can make them emotionally engaged with that, my retention's higher. Yep. Right. And that means my churn will be lower. And so that's like the entire concept of, of marketing this stuff. And I think I'm really excited to release this video on it because I think it'll be a big eye opener for a lot of beginner creators because it's kind of like distilling a year's worth of marketing classes down to just here you go. This is this is how you do it. You don't need to go study this stuff or do a master's course uh, and, and go from there. And I, I actually 
it, this stuff was all reminded to me. And what inspired me to make this video, and it's a much deeper video, is by a content creator called Yozoro, who is a VTuber who did marketing as well, who did a three minute video that just broke those pillars. Was up that the one that in you a very went tight, off? concise way? That, yeah, 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 yeah. Very like, yeah, in a tight, concise way. And it was like so interesting to me because I have spent so long in the streaming space now that I keep hearing these things like from Harris and Devin and the, all the words they use. And it was nice to listen to someone and hear actual marketing terms, yeah. which I haven't heard since I was doing digital marketing a few years ago. And it kind of like slapped me in the face and woke me up and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do a deep dive into this because their video was like three minutes, just like really basic. But I'm gonna, my video is going to be like 26 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a good but I think it because like, I, I got to go a lot more. I got to break it down properly for people to understand, right? Give examples, show them an audience, show them how to target them and stuff. It's kind of similar in a longer form of what I just did. Um, but yeah, if 2022, if I started again, that is 100% something I would do. And every YouTube channel and every project or every idea that I have, I do tend to do those processes. Um, and if you don't do those, well, you don't really have a content strategy. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, it's it's crazy. Like with content creation, yeah, like you said, LJ, it's like you're kind of starting a, a business in a way. So you, you, you need to kind of put the effort into learning a bit about marketing. Like that's just, a, mm -hmm. I think, a fact of the matter is you need to learn mm -hmm. a bit of marketing. And however you do that is up to you. There's there's lots of different avenues to do that. Um, but that's really the what comes down to it. And what I think I think is going to be great about that video, LJ, is that that advice will apply to everyone regardless. Whereas a lot of the other videos like from Devon and Harris and things like that, they tell you specific things. And like that, if you've been watching our podcast for a while, you probably would have heard and understand us like kind of going through these motions. It was like we started saying one thing, we were trying some stuff, but then now we're on the point where it's like, no, some of the, this advice could be good for certain yep. people, but won't work for everyone. Like for, we've said, like for, you know, for all of us have said that trying to do YouTube segments um, while live and then repackaging them, it's just not working, but it may work for you. So like if you do get, if anyone, if you do watch any videos or things like that, where they're giving you some sort of like sort of specific sort of tangible advice, don't, don't take it as gospel, try it. It's like, it can work, try it, see if it works for you. That's the most important thing. And if it doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean that, you know, you're a failure or it doesn't mean that, you know, that you're not cut out for this. It just mm -hmm. means that you might need to just approach things differently. May, you know, you might maybe just you need to put some time aside to record original YouTube content. What you might have done on stream instead, you just have to record it offline instead because that works better for you. So I, th and I think that's the biggest thing is people when people th see that things aren't working for them or it just doesn't pan out, they... It, they look at themselves, they look too inward and think, I am a failure. This isn't going great. I'm not, I'm never going to grow with this like that. But don't be so hard on yourself. Like, again, just be a little bit stubborn and be like, I'm just going to try again, but I'm going to try differently this time. So yep. don't, don't sort of beat yourself up too much and don't compare yourself either because everyone else, everyone's going to be on their own content creation journey. Some people go, you know, grow really quickly. Some people grow, you know, naturally over time. And some people, it'll take someone a long time before anything um, actually ends up happening. So that just that's probably a big thing to, to remember to keep in mind. And, all, and of course, go watch LJ's video when it comes out because that deep dive will be very, very beneficial um, to learning all of those marketing terms and how you can apply things to you specifically. Yes. That's the, that's the key thing. De dead on the money there. It really is. Um, I guess the big thing that I'd say also if I'm starting from day dot is I, I just want to learn as many skills as I possibly can. Because if it comes down to the end of the day and streaming isn't for you, you have learned so much through editing, sound, mm. sound mixing, um, presentation, uh, writing a script, whatever it is, because you do have to do those things to do what you do as a content creator. If you're just kind of winging it on the side, well, at least you're learning improv or something. But I, I think the reason why you do content creation is you want yourself to be heard and you want to present yourself to people who you don't know that hopefully they can relate to to what you're talking about. So if you mm. break that down even further, it's like, why are you doing content creation? And if the reason is obviously, you know, money and fame, yeah, that's great. That's obviously the end goal of a lot of people out there. But what are the steps that you're taking before then? Because if it doesn't work out, which a lot of the time it will not work out to where it can be a viable income for you if you're just doing streaming, what can you at least take away at the end of it if you did it for six months or a year or however long it is and go, well, at least I can now apply that to this. 
because a lot of people, as we said, will just go live, wait for the best to happen. Hopefully they get a big old raid from XQC or something, and then they've made it. It's not going to happen like that. I've never seen it happen. We've talked about raids um, in the past and everything like that. But what can you make people stay? How can they stay? Why should they stay? And that's something that I'm also doing. I need to reflect on that. It's like, what can I do that is outside of streaming that will continue my journey as a content creator? So I'm kind of in this on day dot as well in terms of thinking of my whole YouTube. So getting this um, feedback is also great. It's like, oh yeah, that makes so so much sense, but you forget about it. You you really do. And you got to think about, you may have heard this in previous podcasts, but for people listening to the podcast for the first time, they haven't heard this. So that's the reason why we do go over some of these steps briefly is that mm. there's always new viewers and you have to know, as we talked about with the memes, yeah, the people at the start will know exactly what we're talking about. And we talked about it numerous times, but the people who just joined today, well, that's what we call a callback. You know, you, you have to kind of implement exactly what you've learned and keep going forward and not just forget about it in the background. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It. I think I think that's a big thing as well. I've had a lot of people say to me, um, oh, LJ, why did you cover this thing again? You've already covered it before. Mm. And it's like, well, okay, so if my tip number three in a video is all about how to reach your audience, then what if someone who's never watched my content before comes in and I had tip number one was how to reach your audience. They're like, who the fuck is my audience? Well, that's why yeah. I say tip number one and two needs to be about how to define your audience and then like understanding them, right? Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise they're going to be lost and I'm never going to grow as a content creator. And people are like, why did you repeat that tip? And it's like, because you are not the only person on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you, you may be aware of this, but like I made a post the other day saying, hey, have you made a Discord server? I know it could be kind of daunting. Um, here's a link uh, as well on our template, right? And then the, 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 the poll said, yes, I've made one. No, I haven't made one. And someone replied back saying, uh, it's really easy. No, they said, they were like, I'm going to be real honest with you. It's easy to make a Discord server and set up bots and do everything like that. It takes you under an hour and then you won't have some shitty templated one like everyone else's I see. And I wrote back to that person. And I said, hey, you know what? I agree. I think it is pretty easy, but I'm going to give you a bit of perspective here. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there who haven't had the same opportunities as myself or as clearly you have that we can be versed in these kinds of things. They haven't spent months running Discord servers or being a part of Discord communities. They haven't slowly learned these things. A lot of these people are getting a first laptop. A lot of these people are entirely from their phone. A lot of these people don't have the same chances as you. They can't install fonts and they need help with that. And that is okay because they're beginners. Mm -hmm. A little bit of perspective for you is that you constantly get told as a streamer, if you can't afford a webcam or your webcam doesn't look nice, use your smartphone. And my constant reply to that is, who the fuck do you think has is watching your videos that every single one of them has a smartphone? Yeah. Like that is such a big assumption. Because for me, when I actually talked to my audience, when I was in the stream scheme discord and interacting with them, like you should be if you're giving educational tips, most of them don't actually have smartphones ready to be used. It's like such a broken concept to assume, right? Because I know I've got the latest iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm pretty well off. You know what I mean? I'm on a plan for it, so I'm paying it off. But there are a lot of people out there who, for starters, even if their smartphone works perfectly fine, it cannot be locked into being a webcam for two hours. One, it fucks the battery up to, for, for a big one. And, and two, they have kids or family or people who need to message them or people they need to reply to while they're streaming or doing other things like that. And that's for a two hour stream, let alone a five hour stream that they have to have the webcam on for. Yeah. And it's their phone, right? They can't tie it up. But then you've got all the other people who have older models and the older model could be broken. It could be uh, uh, not work with the app or it's just all they can afford. It's a hand-me-down from their older brother or their mom or any of these things. And it's like, we, people have this assumption in their head that because I've had these experiences, Everyone has had these experiences. Discord servers, easy. Fonts, mm -hmm. easy. How dare you not have these opportunities? And it's like, no, it's it's just not the case. Yep. There are people out there who aren't as lucky as we are. And that's why you need to go through these things carefully and explain them properly. And if you make fun of the people, like this is one thing that grinds my gears. I will go watch YouTubers who I really like in this space. They're really lovely people. They're very funny people. But the thing that pisses me off most is when I'm watching their videos, they'll often make fun of or make light of people who don't have the same opportunities or experiences them. Mm -hmm. So like they'll, they'll, this is one of the reasons why I used to get really annoyed and people made fun of slobs because Streamlabs is so easy for a beginner. 
it is it is not daunting. Yep. Right. Yep. And a lot of the time, people make fun of the people who use slobs. And it's like, dude, people can use whatever the fuck they want. Leave them alone. Correct. Right. Like, yeah. Like we don't have to bully or belittle people just because they're new. You know what I mean? Like I, I, sometimes I'll tease people and go, "All right, Billy, why do you only have a donation panel on your stream?" Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like it's like it's like you should know better in that case. But I'm not I'm not going to have a go at you intensely. I'm just going to use this as a fun way to kind of go, "Hey, come on, wake up." Yeah. Yeah. But like. Other people will like aggressively tear you down. Like, why the fuck are you using Streamlabs? Like, literally, you see, like, you go to our Twitch and someone will be like, hey, I'm having trouble with Streamlabs. And the replies will be like, vitriolic. Like, why are you doing that? Swap. Swap right now or else no one will help you. Yeah. And it's like, dude, chill the fuck out and let the guy, if you can't help the guy, don't scream at him. Just piss off. I agree. Someone yeah. else will help him. I like I like the thing this thing. It's like and that's that's the point important distinction. Like I'll like tease some people if they had like mentioned it and be like Streamlabs, what are you doing? Go like, but like, it's, it's never gone. It's like it's never to that level because that type of level that you, it's just horrible and that really will put people off too. There's like they they have not understood why people are just getting so aggressive with them. Um, and you're yeah, you're completely right, LJ. Absolutely. It, you've got to look at it from the side of the viewer, right? Like if I'm viewing something, like say I'm watching Nick's stream, I'm watching LJ's stream. I don't in the back of my mind go, I wonder what they're using to broadcast this. I wonder if they're using Streamlabs, because if they're using fucking Streamlabs, I'm out of this joint. Mm. You've got to look at it from the point of view of you as you're watching a broadcast and it shouldn't come down to what equipment they're using or anything like that because let's admit these people like how are they going to have a say in what's going on behind the scenes they're using a program that is out there for free because that's all they can have at the moment and again it is very much intuitive to use do i think they're less of a streamer because they're using something like that no they're not the head of freaking streamlabs they're not the head of amazon or whatever it is whatever kind of vitriolic thing that you've got going on in terms of what you think is right and what is wrong doesn't have to be projected onto another person they are there mm. to entertain and that's what we need to separate as well if you don't like what somebody's spooking because they're doing something political on their stream, that's fine. You can turn off. But if you turn off because they're using a program that you deem is unsuitable for a streamer, then that really re is a reflection on you than what you're trying to put, put out there. And mm. I, I honestly think that you just need to take a step back and go, we're all in this for the same reason. We have this infinite pool of success that we can all dip our cups into and hopefully get a good old swig of it, you know? But if you are so jealous or so jaded by what another streamer is doing that is affecting you to such a degree that you're angry at the world, then maybe content creation isn't the best for you to do because it's always going to be like that. There's always going to be mm. something that is the latest trend that you think is, how can people be watching Amaranth in a, in a hot tub? How dare they? You have the choice not to watch it. You have the choice to make your own content, which is the complete opposite of that. But you can't get angry at another person for what people are viewing and viewing in masses because then you're against a whole swarm of things that you mm. can't control. So I, I just think the thing is be in control of yourself and not another person. Don't lash out. Really focus mm. on what you are, what your content is, because that's the only thing that you can put out there that people will watch. I think the thing for me is, is that sometimes I hate giving takes yeah right yeah. but i i've also had to come to terms with the fact that in the space that i've entered takes are something people want from me they want my opinion on gambling streams mm -hmm. they want my opinion on hot tub streams they want my opinion on all these things and i would much rather just be like who cares right yeah the gambling stuff i'm a bit more outspoken about because i think it actually harms an audience mm -hmm. you know what i mean also a fairly young audience let's be real the majority of gambling streamers have an audience who is just like only just hitting 18 yep. or even are under 18 yep um yep. But like, I feel like if you're going to, it's like small streamer Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. Small streamer Twitter is this weird world of people just having takes and opinions about what you can and can't do on your stream. Yes. Right. Yes. And like, and like people will be like, oh, LJ, don't you tell people not to use follower only mode? I'm like, yeah, because they want to grow, right? I'm giving you best practices. You can still use it. I don't give a fuck, right? I, I just means you're probably not going to grow as fast. But if you feel more comfortable, do it, right? And that's what I said earlier, right? If you have specific reasons you can't do something that is a best practice, well, I'm not going to get angry at you or yell at you or scream at you. Yeah. I'm just going to be like, well, that was best practice. You know, do what you can. Do your best. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. But the problem I think a lot of people have is, is they don't realize 
that at the end of the day, the only thing about your stream that is make it or break it or matters is your little box that you are in on their screen, right? That's right. What they're hearing and seeing is the only stuff that actually matters. And I can prove this because I started streaming and grew using Streamlabs. And then when I switched to OBS, I would switch back and forth from OBS and Streamlabs every two or three nights, depending on what I wanted to test for a video. For two weeks, I left OBS and just used Streamlabs because I wanted to use their buffer feature so I could make a video on it. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, not a single person ever commented about what uh, software I was using. Exactly. Exactly. None, none, none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the best part is the times where they said, oh, I love that motion movement you just did. It wasn't when I was using the motion plugin in OBS. It was when I was using the motion transition in Streamlabs because they thought the way it was integrated there was like, it looked really nice. And and I, I, I think it's super interesting to me that people care so much about this shit, right? They really do. They care so much about what you're using and judging you for it in this space. But it's like, I could sit here and tell you guys, yeah, I'm using OBS. And you wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and we yeah, we've like we said before, it's like some for some people, you know, that Streamlabs OBS will be all they ever need and probably what all they ever want, because that's just the fact of the matter. It's just it's just a bit easier. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of certain situations where, you know, someone starting out might not have the best PC. Um and as we know, you know, Streamlabs OBS does use a bit more CPU because they try to add a lot more things inside the software. So for some people, just from a, a technical standpoint of just being able to run the thing and, and have a stable stream, OBS Studio ends up being a bit better. But obviously, there's a mm. little bit more of a learning curve to it. So there's and there's lots of finite, you know, situations, but you just don't know. You just don't know. And I think it's like it's. And as as the internet has clearly shown time and time again, apparently for some people, it's really hard to just be a decent human being. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like that Bo Burnham song, right? Like Bo Burnham has that song or that bit in Inside where he's like sat there in his room and he's in the darkness with a light on him and he's like kind of doing a stand up. He's on a stool and he goes, why is it that in this day and age, every single fucking human being needs to have a take about something. Mm -hmm. Like like that's the whole rant he goes on. Like you don't need to have an opinion on something. You can shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always try and ask myself before I do a tweet, I'm like, does this fucking matter? Like, is this, <laughs> does this matter? Like I say to myself, like, do I need to have a take on this? Yeah. And like, I delete entire tweets. Like I had a tweet the other day where I was like, I was gonna tweet out about streaming and small streamers and the Bloomberg leak and be like, you know what, fuck you guys, read the actual article because you're all freaking out. And yeah, it could be bad, but it also could be good. You don't know, shut up, right? But I was like, if my viewers look at that, I might get a lot of interactions, engagements, maybe some people being negative, maybe some people being positive, whatever it is. But is that going to make their day any better? Mm. Does it fucking mm. matter at yeah. the end of the day? People asked me for my take on Twitter and I just didn't reply to them. Instead, I tweeted something else, some stupid little thing about how I, my to-do list made me lost or some shit. And it's like, it's like legitimately like ask yourself, does me tweeting about this really fucking matter? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, yeah. I guess sometimes I know that I have a take on something and then I look back and then I'm like, geez, why did I bother with that? Yeah. And I think that's one of the things I've also learned on stream recently. My wife said to me, she goes, if you're going to go live and you want to have a really, really good stream, the best thing you can do, I reckon is just not tell them that you're tired or not tell them that you're having a rougher day or don't tell your audience uh, about stuff or don't talk about all the hot takes that are coming up on Twitter or on your stuff like that. Ignore it all and just have fun. And I think you'll have a better time. And I was like, you know what? I think you're right. And so I stopped I stopped telling people like, oh, I'm feeling a little tired today and stuff like that. No, I just went in and I was like, guys, you don't even know. I got all this stuff. Someone's like, hey, can you tell us about the Bloomberg article? And I'm like, nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep doing my thing, right? And it, it makes my streams better. Because I'm pushing the negativity and the stupid shit that doesn't matter out of it. And part of this is because I've recently adopted something called stoicism. Okay. Uh, I haven't fully managed to do it, but stoicism is kind of the concept of the thing I love about it is if you can't control anything or you can't affect it, then you shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, once, oh, okay. Once I release, okay. once I release a video, if it does poorly, it doesn't matter. The only thing I can do is focus on the next video. Yep. And adopting this look has been so much better while i'm live if i think to myself my chatters are really low right now i can't do anything other than enjoy myself to increase that so you know what it doesn't matter mm -hmm. and i continue to enjoy myself and i've always kind of had this in a lot of ways 
for example, my wife said to me, she goes that I naturally fell into doing this because she'd come to me and go, oh, I got all these things, these problems, blah, blah. And I'd go, can you control it? Can you do anything <laughs> yeah. about it? And she'd go, well, no, I just wanted to vent a little bit. And I go, well, you're simply wasting your energy venting, aren't you? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like a Jedi. Yeah. I didn't realize <laughs> that it actually had a name. Because so there's I, a lot more to it. Though. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I do that naturally in life. Like sometimes I've had a couple of people say, even my girlfriend, it's I'd be like, sometimes you just way too chilled out. I'm just like, I just die unless it's, unless I can control it. There's nothing I can do. You know, like a lot of people getting like, and I'm not, and not, I'm not, I don't, not trying to invalidate people here. Um, but like you know, getting stressed out and worried about the pandemic and things a lot. And I'm just like, I can't control what's happening in the world. All I can do is just control about what I'm doing and what I'm in control of. You know, I'm going to wear a mask mm. and I'm going to stay home when I need to and blah, 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 blah. And that's it. And like, yep. so it, like, just as an example. Um, but I think, and I, and I think I go through periods where sometimes I can apply that to content creation. Other times it's like, you know, we've all been there where it's like the numbers just, or the, st you know, the stats just like, and performance just, it eats at you a little bit. But no, L yep. yeah, LJ, that's good. I'm glad, that glad to hear that. And that is probably the best way to, to think about it. It's like if, and I, I think I've tried to do a little bit more of that recently as well. I, like I'll look at my stream graph after a stream and I'll be like, okay, how did this perform? And I'll, and I'll try and look at some, some key points in the stream where I need to go back to the VOD and see what happened at this point and what happened at this point. Um, but apart from that, it's just like, I'm not, but yeah, you just don't try to, don't stress over it. Cause you can't, you just, it's happened. That's it. Mm, yeah. If I have a, if I have a, so one of the things I've been doing lately is, I, uh, on nights where I don't want to know how many viewers I have, uh, and this is maybe scary, ooh, hot take, I just don't raid. Mm -hmm. I just don't raid. Yeah. Because I'm like, I had a really great stream. I don't give a shit how many viewers I've got, but I'll tell you what, I also don't want to know how yes. many viewers I've got. I've done that. I've so done that. I just go, guys, mm -hmm. I'm not raiding today. Everyone join the Discord. Good night. And I head off, right? And then the next morning, I'll have a coffee. I'll be like, man, that was such a good stream, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe later in the day, I'll go look at a few key analytics that I can affect, mm -hmm. right? I can't affect average viewers but I can affect my go live clicks. Yep. I can affect my Discord joins. I can affect my sort of affect my unique chatters. And I can kind of make some ideas in my head of things I can control. But at the end of the day, I cannot control if I have 120 or if I have 20, right? Viewers, that is. So like, I just I just enjoy myself. Yeah. And I, I, it's just, honestly, guys, oh, it's so much better. It is. It's so much You're better. You're such a happier person having... because of it as well. Like I find, yeah. um, and I, I should say that our original question was, what would we do if we had to start over again? And I think definitely if I had to boil it down to the most important thing, it's what these uh, two beautiful uh, men just said. And that's mentality. You, you can only affect what you can affect, right? Anything outside of that is variables. Anything outside of that is something that you cannot control. And it's not a reflection on you. It's a reflection of just what's going on at that time in that particular person's life, because I'm guessing we're talking about viewerships in here, everything like that. And you, you you can only do what's best. If you put on a good show and if you're energetic and if you hit those highs that you wanted to hit, you hit those marks, then that's it. Like you should be so happy that you did that. Because again, if it comes down to the fact that you went live for four hours and you feel like crap afterwards and you feel like everything is a waste of time, then is that really living? Is that really like content creation in general? No, you, you, you're literally just doing this like weird, flagellating thing of just whipping yourself on the back for something that's just going to make you feel like crap. So you do what you do if you have one of those days and go outside, touch some grass, as we say, and, and continue on and just affect things that is best. But I should say, should we continue on to the Q and A's right now? Yes. I think that's yes. a really yes. lovely note to end on in terms of the overarching question. Mm. So I, I kept a few sneaky Q and A's. Ooh. That we didn't go through last night. So if anyone doesn't know, we did a podcast last night, an up late podcast with EO. Um, and I saved a few of the questions because I figured, oh, we're recording tomorrow morning yeah. as well. So we better be careful yes. about it. Yes. Um, so we've had a, a for starters. We've had a lot of amazing comments. Actually, a lot of people commenting and being like, this was a great podcast. Holy crap. I have zero questions. Oh, I just have nice. action I have to go nice. do. Um, so we are running low on Q and A's, but that is purely because apparently people are just loving the content, like absorbing it. Yeah. And I will say not last week's video, lo not last week's episode where it was, uh, the truth about streaming platforms. That one's done. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the two with um, the one with micro mads and the one that was, uh, why streaming is in a long-term career. Those two podcasts popped the hell off. Like they popped, they, they went, they went way further than our core audience. 
and they did so well. And we had so many amazing comments from people. So I want to throw it out there. If you're listening to this, thank you so much for all the comments. Thank you. Um, they, I read them all and they are wild. And if they're like specifically for a person, I screenshot them and pass them on yes. um, to yes. the person. And they're brilliant. Like, honestly, thank you so much. Um, but we've yeah. had a, a question here from uh, Melon Chotato um, who says, do you have any tips for people pleasers? Sorry, I should clarify. There's a much bigger comment talking about, uh, remember how we talked about the Northern Lion stuff yes. and how you do a stream because people ask you to and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, but they said, do you have any tips for people pleasers who struggle to say to request an unhelpful uh, feedback? If this has been answered before, then let me know. I don't think we have answered this before, mm -hmm. but I, I, I guess the tips for people pleasers is to focus right? Focus on the people who actually matter, not the outspoken ones, not the loud ones, because sometimes the loudest ones are also the, the minority. Yes. Right? Yes. What you need to focus on in my head are the people who really matter. And I think this comes back to defining my audience, right? I know the people who matter because when I play a game or say a certain go live, they'll click it, right? Um, but I also know that people will be like, please, 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 please play super liminal. And it's like, yeah, okay, I'll play it. And maybe like a hundred people will love it, but I won't get that 130, 150. Yes. Right. And that's because there is that silent minority who don't want me to play that. Mm -hmm. And so here's my big piece of advice for people pleasers. If you want to play a game like I do, like I want to play Stanley Parable, but I think that me playing Stanley Parable live will be worse content because I will try and interact with chat a bunch, which means I miss some of the fun dialogue and stuff like that. And it's going to make worse content if I have to focus on one or the other. Mm -hmm. But I really want to play it. And chat really wants to see me play it. So I'm going to record it offline. I'm going to do a playthrough of Stanley Parable here in my office, record two hours of playing it, and then pass it off to an editor and let them edit it. Because that way I can focus purely on the game, the witty comments, and then I can give that content to an editor and it's OC content. So those people who want to see it can go to the YouTube channel and watch it. And then the people who didn't want to watch it as a live stream might still click it because they don't want to miss out on content, right? And generally it also opens me up to a new audience over on there while making evergreen content. And, and that's my big piece of advice. If you want to please people, you want to still do something, but you know it will underperform, take away the risk, Yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, or if you really want to stream it, add an extra day, right? Like if I go live Saturday night, I don't go live Saturday nights. So if I went live Saturday night and played Stanley Parable, it doesn't matter if I've got 50 average viewers because normally I'd have zero average viewers on that night. Correct. It doesn't matter if I only get three gift subs because I would get zero gift subs on that night normally because I'm not live. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so my big thing is take the risk away by putting it in a new format that won't affect your other streams and it will become so much more fun. Yeah. I, I completely agree. There's nothing much I can put on to that. Um, are we talking about people pleasers as in the games that please the people like from a streamer's point of view? Are we talking yeah, about- Yeah, so they they um said that they had a lot of people asking them to play certain games gotcha. or do types gotcha. of content or having requests yep. or, or they give you unhelpful feedback. Uh -huh. How do you how do you handle those requests and the games and the types of content and stuff like that? Yes, um, obviously you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think you do have to make that mark of, I know there's certain games that I won't play on stream because it, as LJ said, it diminishes your returns and you're not gonna get the full kind of uh, spectrum out of it that you wanted. And again, I have those sacred games that are mine. They're, they're, you can't touch these. Nobody can comment on these because I don't play them live. I don't want your comments, anything like that. Those, those are my moments. But there are games out there that you can definitely go, yeah, okay, I wasn't planning on playing it, but I'll give it a shot. And doing it outside of your hours, as LJ said, is a very smart take on it because at least you know that if you get like that dip in viewership or maybe even a, a peak in viewership, you're like, actually, this goes really, really well for me. But like you said about niching down before, does it go in with your core values? So if it's like a Nintendo game, you can go over to Zelda, you can go over to Mario, things like that. Or is it something like, okay, now that I played Mario, now I want to play this hardcore horror game. It's like other people who have established really want to see that. And it really comes down to you, but um, give it a shot. Give it a shot, definitely, if you've never done it, because what's the harm in trying? The worst thing is not to try and then completely passing on something that is just maybe going to kick off your channel even more. But do it outside the hours is my only recommendation. Uh, that, that's just me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, touching on sort of the, uh, I guess, the unhelpful feedback uh, point of that one. Um it's tough. I've tried that in the past to try like, you know, I've put like a, you know, made like a little Google form thing and tried to get people to kind of give me some feedback or just a message in the discord. And it's hard because 
you, you, you're getting feedback from the people who like from from the your regulars, the people who are coming to your stream regardless. Um, and it can be really, really tough. And the only thing that you can really do, and we've talked about in the past, is like looking back at your streamer graphs and looking at certain points of your VODs where certain good, where you know there was a big spike or you know there was you dropped off a bunch of viewers. Um, and also uh, there's like a which I'm not sure how long it's been in there. I saw I saw some tweets about it recently. Um, there's a you can change the graph from the average viewers to chat engagement. So you can see at what parts in the stream, like there was like a lot of active chatters compared to when there wasn't. So then you can go back into that point to the VOD and thing and look at it and go, why was everyone chatting at this moment? Or why did everyone get really quiet? Um, and that and that's information, that's tangible information that can kind of help you get a feel for what you might need to do better or what you need to do more of because that was really successful. Um, but I think the biggest thing, and this kind of leads into something as well that I think um, of one thing that I would do differently as well, create a good network of people going through the same, um, you know, sort of journey as you are, whether you're doing YouTube or Twitch or also or whatever you're doing. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be like, like we are, we're, we're recording a podcast as we do this, but <laughs> just having people, one or more people that you can like actually, you know, be critical with each other and, and, and kind of share your, your own, your, your each other's struggles and, and kind of talk about that because that's the biggest thing that's going to help you is ha having those proper conversations with other people who understand and then on that similar journey with you. And you together you can you can make mistakes and learn from them yourselves and and therefore you can kind of get on the right path a lot quicker. You can do the right things earlier on rather than the trial and error later because you don't know about what anyone else is doing. You don't know what they're struggling with. So yeah, um, yeah having get, just get a good just find some a good network of people that will you know are similar to you and you can give each other feedback. The who and mm. actually view your streams and um yeah. and watch back your own stuff. That was a big part of uh, last night's video that I talked about. So last night's video uh, was my was a video where I, I I was sitting there and someone said to me, "What are tips you wish you knew before streaming?" Right, and I think we all get asked that constantly. And my head instantly went to the generic ones, and I was like, "Fuck, I am tired of hearing the generic ones." And in my head, I was like, "I want to give actionable advice, but all the actionable tips I can think of are generic." And so instead, I I kind of sat there and I kind of Lent back and I closed my eyes and I was thinking to myself, like, what are three things that I kind of wish someone had said to me that might not have been covered a lot, mm -hmm. right? Or or really talked about or things that I didn't get told, but I had to kind of figure out for myself. And then when I figured them out, they made a lot of sense, right? And um, the three things were that were in the video were... Um, you have to come to terms early on with the fact that everything you do will either turn on or turn off a viewer, right? And you shouldn't be scared of turning off viewers because at the end of the day, as we've always said on this podcast, you need to be okay with that. Like you just need to be okay with getting up and going to the toilet. You might lose 10 viewers better than shitting your pants on stream, right? <laughs> what is it you know, for the and, content? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you know, it depends who your audience is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Into that. You got me there. Um, but then you've got on your second side of things, like, so the second tip was... Um, that you shouldn't uh you shouldn't try and be someone you're not mm -hmm. right it's very easy to be scared to be yourself because when you get critical judgment on yourself and you are being yourself it hurts so much more right and we've talked a lot on the podcast about how much being called fake fucked me up right mm -hmm. and like that like i took that so to heart and that actually made me become more fake because i became more reserved um and that was a big one as well and then the final tip was literally i realized thanks to this podcast how fucking weirdly isolated and lonely I was as a streamer and a content creator. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have a lot of mates. Like I could count on one hand how many collaborations I had actually done with other streamers around my size and stuff like that. And yeah, I had mods and community members and friends and family and stuff like that. But I didn't have anyone like you boys who I could go, fuck, this sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, you know I'm, I'm mean? the same. I'm completely yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was a big part of it. And I, I referenced the Mr. Beast advice, which we talked about uh, two episodes ago, where it's like Mr. Beast says, you and four friends should all start together on different channels. Because if you all make five mistakes per video, well, then at the end of the day, at the end of the week, you've all released a video or all done a stream and you've learned 25 mistakes together compared to if you are alone, you just learn from your five. And that was a big part. And a lot of people seem to be really heavily um, 
engaging with and understanding the concept of feeling that isolation and that loneliness because they haven't done what you just said, Nick, and what we've what we've said. And they are alone and they are making the mistakes and they and they don't have the ability to do it. And they can't watch their own stuff back critically and they need to make these mistakes with others or else they spend longer time. Right. And a lot of people say like stream advice is a superfluous thing because the best way to grow is to simply get out there and start creating. And it's like, yeah, it's true. That it, the best way to, to start streaming, it, to learn to stream, is to stream. But also, fuck, wouldn't it be much easier if when you go live or right before you go live, you were able to watch a video that said, hey, here's all this stuff that I wish I knew yeah. and you could skip it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of people are like, stream advice is useless because you should just be streaming. And it's like, okay, well, I'm glad you have such a strong concept of how to improve that you never need to worry. Mm. But not all of us have a network to be able to do that exactly. or the ability. So it is nice, right? Yeah. Like I still go and watch stream advice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I come yeah. and talk to you guys about mistakes and ideas. Uh, and like, you know, we all show each other our thumbnails um, and our cocks and we all give yeah. feedback on it. What was that yeah. second and, bit? Sorry, what? Sorry, what? Yeah. what? I just... Our thumbnails. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 cut sorry, cut sorry. Cut that, I missed that. Cut that. Yeah, yeah, cut that. These, um, these dirty headphones. No, I mean, like, every yeah. now and then, honestly, like, I'll I'll, I'll throw up, uh, like, one of your vi videos will appear in my my homepage, LJ, on Stream Scheme, and it'll be something like, I'm like, hmm, I'll give this a watch. Or maybe I want a bit more information about this. Um, mm. And so, like, yeah, the, 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 you can never sort of stop learning and building your own knowledge base and then forming your own uh, sort of, process for how you do things because like like building your own network so important but like but at the same time even if you do have that network of friends and you're all doing you're all making mistakes and learning from them each of you unless you're doing unless each of you are doing the like even if you each of you are doing the exact same thing right mm -hmm. it, you're still different people different personalities and think some things will work a bit better for someone that then they won't for others and that's just i think the key point to remember is like if you build this network, you can't as as such of a hard habit as it is to break, the moment you start comparing yourself and then you start looking down on yourself, like, oh man, like I'm not doing as well as that person, or they've done this better than I have. It's like, no. Just mm. just do do your best to just push that out of your head. You're there to sort of learn together and grow together and find what be what what works best for you. Yeah. Be humble. Mm. That's the final thing I want to say. Be humble. You can always learn more. You can always improve on what you're doing. Just just don't think that because you've gone to a certain stage that you stop. Don't never rest on your laurels. Always try and keep going and just be humble about it. It's not slight against you. Just keep going. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And just because someone gives someone else advice or learns something and passes yeah. it on yeah. doesn't mean that it hurts you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People it's, take that to heart. It's like, it's like, oh my God. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. It's, it's like the whole student loan debt forgiveness thing. Yeah. I paid off my student loan. Why should we forgive everyone else? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, so weird. Right. It's like, yeah, you fucking suffered, mate. Why do you have to let have, you don't want other people to suffer as well, right? Like I, I lost my confidence and I was isolated. If I can tell people starting now, try not to fucking isolate mm -hmm. yourself and be confident and don't listen to the, the idiots, then hopefully they don't go through what I go through. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the same with this podcast, right? It's like, Sometimes people just need to hear things in a different way and it saves them time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if, if, if you are going to listen to idiots, let us be the only idiots that you listen to. Uh, so <laughs> that's it is true. We are giant uh, dum-dums. Uh, and there's another question. Another question, oh, nice. obviously. Oh, nice. um, uh, it's from Jess. Uh, hey. who Lovely has, Jess. Hello, Jess. Yes, <laughs> who has said that they... Um, uh, has said that they uh, have received the PayPal contract Good. as an ideas person to keep sending ideas in for Glad us. Glad you got the payment. Great. Glad you got it. Um, Beautiful. I'll be honest. I thought we all agreed we weren't going to pay them because they were giving us ideas for free. Kind of surprised, but each to their own. Um, Whoops. And it's a very big, long question. But I will admit... <laughs> We used it as the inspiration for today's. <laughs> Je Jess is like, Jess is like, was it three for three, four for four now? Je I've had three different podcasts inspired by their questions. Oh so, guess. Jess, you're basically um, our producer now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's Just what tell us we're listening so to. Essentially, what it is is that they, they kind of were asking a little bit about the people who are starting nowadays, right? Like, if post pandemic it's going to be harder. Well, then, you know, what What do we do? What's going on? You know, people aren't working from home anymore. Does that mean it's going to be more difficult? Would you have done things differently? And really, we took that and we kind of decided to use it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Jess, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry that LJ uses you in this way. No, so. I told you before LJ we started recording you that Jess I was like, asked no, this question. Don't do it. I and said, LJ Jess asked this <laughs> question and I think it's great inspiration. And you were like, oh, I love that. Yeah. LJ oh my said God. that I came up with this idea by myself and I think you should know that this is an LJ original. And you I was like, yeah, for this. sure, man, that sounds great. And now yeah. we've been, the wool's been pulled just, over our eyes yet uh, again. He's just, he's going to you again. Jess is going to put stream room producer in their Twitter bio now. <laughs> as you should, <laughs> Jess, mean, as you should. Yeah. <laughs> it was something we didn't cover though. Um, we kind of did, but we kind of didn't. And I think it would be a nice way to wrap the Q&A and wrap the podcast mm -hmm. is that TLDR, Will post-pandemic streamers struggle more in this day and age than we did over the last two years? Because we talked about how we are all creators of circumstance to a degree, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like if there are a higher chances and more people available, you can kind of get yours while the getting's good, right? So guys, do you think post-pandemic streamers are going to have more difficulties and struggle more? Yes, I do. I don't think it'll be that way forever. I'm just saying at the moment, uh, you know, once you have been housebound for quite a considerable amount of time, you want to go out and you want to do things. And I think that's the best thing to do is see your friends, see your family, travel, um, and don't stick in front of the screen uh, longer than you have to. Now, am I saying that it's always going to be the way? Definitely not. Um, I think people come back to it. But at the moment, it is heading into summer over in America, as we said, the Northern Hemisphere. People are going to be more out and about. The hardest thing that you have to deal with when starting off is that you will, obviously, if you're just going to this for the first time, you don't have a base. You've got to start making that base and there's less viewers to do that. But you also got to look at it on the flip side as well as there may be less streamers out there as well because they're doing something else. They, they've done, they tried it. They don't want to do it anymore. So maybe there's less, I say in quotation marks, competition. But it is always going to be a thing that will have its uh, peaks and troughs. And the, the sooner that you become a streamer, the more advantageous you can be when those peaks come. Because Lord knows if you just wait for the peak and then try and get into it when everyone's doing the same thing at the same time, you're going to be lost in the shuffle. We are, as we said, creators of circumstance. But definitely, if you have a passion, if you have like a, a willingness to get it, definitely, please, please, please do it. Like right now, get yourself a little game plan and go, I'm going to go live on this date because it will pay dividends in the end. Yeah, like mm -hmm. like like I said before, the tide is extremely ro low right now. The seaweed's showing, but eventually that tide's going to come back in and it's going to normalize. It's mm -hmm. gonna it's gonna get back there. But and this is the time that if you're going to start out or you've just started, taking the time to find, as we've said this this entire podcast, finding who you are and what content works best for you, so you're ready. Just as Reap said, so that you are ready when things mm -hmm. the tide does come back in, and because there's probably maybe less people that can catch live streams, but you know, because YouTube as L LJ has gone on to detail as well, because you know, like TikTok and, and YouTube, like people can view those whenever they want, right? Mm -hmm. TikTok's easy because they can easily flick through it. It's short videos on their phone, you know, in the mornings or, you know, before they go to bed or whatever. And YouTube, the video's there whenever that person can get to it. So it's more important than ever to spend also that time diversifying. You can, you can get away with doing like two to three streams a week and spending that extra day or so working on diversifying and, you know, making original content for YouTube and, and, and making stuff for TikTok and stuff like that. It's more important than ever right now to diversify. Yeah. And we, we will, mm. we will, in, we will hammer this home as, as long as we possibly can try to diversify, diversify. So yes, streaming itself will be a, a struggle um, for, for the foreseeable future, for, but not, it won't be forever. And, but the, you know, videos on demand, TikTok, YouTube, that people will still, still always, the audience is still there for that. It's just, you know, when people get the time to do it. So it's important to just, you know, spread your time and, and work on that other stuff as well. Mm. On, on that topic, something really interesting. Um, Iona, we were talking this morning and they said, you know, what's really funny. Someone brought up the fact that so many Twitch partners around our size tell you to diversify and make YouTube channels. But then if you go and actually look at those Twitch partners, most of them don't have a very big following on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, for example, like you two guys, right? Like your following on YouTube is, is it's there and you're trying to grow it and stuff like that, but it's not huge. But yes. the advice is yes. diversify, yes. right? 
Whereas like I'm giving the advice and I have the YouTube channel. And so there's others, but then you go look at other creators, literally any partner around our size. If you said, Hey, can you give me stream advice? They'd probably do regurgitate the advice of go create content somewhere else while actually not really having a following. And I wanted to quickly say, cause you mentioned the diversify thing. I think you kind of have to take it seriously on both, both sides of that, right? Yeah. Cause if we look at the two sides of the coin of people who have a following people who don't, the reason you guys are saying to diversify is because you don't have a following and you realize how stressful it is. I need right? a following to survive. It comes down to that. I need a following on YouTube right? outside of streaming. Yes. So it's like you guys realize you're under the pump and the stress and you're like, mm -hmm. for the love of God, don't do this. Put to the <laughs> diversify, yeah. right? Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so it's like people are like, well, they don't have a following. So what do you mean? Why do I have to do that? And it's like, no, no, listen to their cautionary tale. Yes. Whereas on the other side of the coin is, is on the other side of the coin is me being like, hey, diversify because streaming is still fucking stressful for me, mm -hmm. but it's a lot less stressful because I got this other thing happening. Yeah. Right. Yep. And I think it's super interesting because when you point it out, if you, if you do talk to most Twitch partners around our size, most don't have a YouTube channel or like a sustainable version of a YouTube channel. Yes. They have maybe like four or five videos going out a year mm -hmm. and it's, it's not growing, yeah. right? Um, and I, I think it's very funny that uh, EO did point this out and I do agree that it is constantly, but I think the reason it's constantly regurgitated is from a space of, I wish I had the, the YouTube channel. <laughs> Honestly, if I could like, with the pandemic, it's like, I wish I focused more on YouTube as well. Um, I really do because I put most of my hours into streaming because I was like, I need to hit those numbers. You need to hit those numbers, you know, get partnered, da, 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 whatever it is. And then if I look back on it now, starting from day dot, as we've said all throughout this podcast, I would so have that evergreen content that I can always show people because Lord mm. knows there's nothing worse than going, here's my Twitch channel. Go to, go to my VOD, which they, you know, it's just like a 10 minute preloading screen. And then it's the actual thing. There's no highlights. Like they can't just jump around with a 10 minute video, whatever it is. It's like, boom, 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 slick, presentable, everything that you've got right there. People aren't going to click on your VODs and go through a five hour stream or whatever it is and go, oh yeah, I'm really engaged, you know, because you don't have that same amount of energy. And to me, um, LJ, you're definitely on the right foot there is that uh, we are a cautionary tale. We are the thing of like, we see that the tide is going out. What do we have after this? We've got to ho hold on to the people that we have and hopefully survive off of that. If not, you know, it's going to be working more out in the in the real world and doing this on the side. So if I can become a content creator, I got you've got you've got to just really do more than just streaming. But again, we've already said yeah. that. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I guess the best way of saying it is streaming is a lot more fun if you uh, have a YouTube channel. Yep. That's like yep. the best way I could say it. Like, you may not like making YouTube content and that's totally fair, but I'll tell you what, streaming is a lot more fun if you have a YouTube channel because yep. then you're not yep. like sat there being like, okay, today, everybody, we've got multiple goals. $25 uh, donations through PayPal, five sub goals and 25,000 <laughs> bits, yep. uh, please. If we can reach these goals, I'll be able to pay rent, <laughs> yeah. food, and this one down here is because I crapped my last pair of pants and I'm out of hot water. And I yep. need <laughs> the new that's it. juicy booties. Yes, exactly. But like, that's that. like a big thing of it, right? Like, yeah. it's like you go to these streamers and a lot of the time I don't think they want to have the sub goals and all that stuff there. They just want to focus on making good content. Mm -hmm. And then the, the revenue usually comes from good content. But the issue is, is that when you're our size, you can't guarantee it comes from that. And therefore the CTAs and the sub goals are required in order to do this full time. Oh, yes. Which is super interesting. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, before we end, boys, uh, mm. I thought even though even though when everyone's going to be watching this podcast, the it's it's this, the week the week to come is already going to be hap ha already has happened. But what do you boys got got planned for the next couple of weeks? What's sort of what's sort of the plan? What's the go? Anything you can share? Games games for content planned? What's uh, what's going on? Um, okay, here's here's something that I can I may be able to cut out uh, later if it doesn't happen. But I know that Walkerman and Lonely Shark Melbourne have reached out to me to do the new Friday the third, uh, not Friday, Evil Dead the game this Friday night. Now I don't know if you boys are interested, but it is a five player game. It's like uh, four players and then one person's the evil thing. So if I can get codes to that. I would love to do a collab stream with all of us um, and obviously Walkerman and Lonely Shark and have a night of trying to kill each other. 
Uh, that sounds great. Apart- love those boys. Yeah, you love those boys. It's, it literally is, feels like that is actually like five people. We all know each other. Yeah. yeah. I know Lonely and Walker because we're all in the same celestial stream team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. So um, that's that's what I'm thinking of doing this this Friday night. So um, again, I'll give you the information. If you can make it, you can make it. If not, got something else on. Completely cool. But uh, in terms of uh, what I've got, I've got the month of mayhem, which is going on, which is kind of like just doing crazy things and trying to find uh, more of a niche. And um. I really want to do more Switch Sports. Uh, obviously, we got the collab with Iona coming up as well. But um, and obviously, trying to do more YouTube stuff. So that's kind of like the, the thing is, I, I really want to get a game plan in for YouTube, which is original content, not stuff on stream. So that's that's kind of my week that that is coming up. And obviously, yeah. editing the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. What about you, LJ? What do you got upcoming that you can share? Uh, yeah. Tonight, I'm doing a sponsored stream with that's uh, brought to you by Twitch and Red Rooster. You. Um, they're sending me uh, a dozen or so uh, of their new burgers <gasps> to eat on stream. Oh, and can you send they, some they my way? Me. Like, just say that you're also streaming from Sydney, as Australia. If there's going to be any left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <as laughs> um, uh, but uh, they they wanted me to play my favorite game. So I get to play uh, Breath of the Wild. Oh. Um, so for the rest of today, I am going on master mode and I have to make a fresh save, defeat the tutorial of master mode, go to Kakariko village and unlock the camera. And then, and then I, that's where I stop. And that's where I start the stream tonight. And I've got two hours and they've issued me 10 challenges that I have to complete. Right. So it's very similar to the AHM one we did reap. Mm-hmm. Um, and the challenges, uh, I haven't seen them yet. But I'm assuming they're going to be chicken or cuckoo based. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> no, so, surely not. No. Oh yes. Um, but I'm excited. I think they're always very fun. I'm very nervous because the mm-hmm. internet issues are back. Yeah. And so I'm very nervous because of that. But I know at the worst case, I can go 4G on my phone, 4500 bit rate, and I can usually power through. Yes. Um, and if it doesn't go well, I will try and reschedule or do something else. But um, you- I'm excited for that. Uh, the thing I'm most excited for, though, is uh, after this podcast, I get to go sit down with a coffee and watch a review of the new YouTube video that's going out on the LJ channel, um, oh, which is exciting. Nice. I'm really, really keen for it. Yes. Um, and if it's all good, which I, honestly, I think it will be good because I watched the rough cut for it already and it's muy caliente. Um, but then uh, if that's all good, then he's going to start editing the Mario Party uh, hey. stream that we did ages ago where I'm bullied and good, good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then on include that Saturday yeah, yeah, bullied, yeah. that. and then on Saturday I'm uh, gonna record Stanley Parable and give it to him to edit as well and I'm gonna get a bunch of content because something that I've learned this week is the blinders were put on me by um the blinders were put on me by content and education right and those blinders told me I had to make content a certain way. I had to make it like Ludwig. I had to make it like uh, Small Ant, like Point Crow, like Ambiguous Amphibian. And, and I think that is the best way to grow, right? I think making content like that is one of the best and most efficient ways to grow. But that doesn't mean that's how everyone wants to grow. And that's totally fair. I'm just giving you best practices. You can do whatever you want. That's all good. But something that I've been reminded of lately is there are people out there like uh, Dangerously Funny. Mm-hmm. Um, or there are people out there who uh, just, they just make content that is in a certain general game or category niche and they make good content and they just let themselves do it and they do it consistently. And that consistency is why they grow because when someone clicks it, they know what they're getting out of it and they go from there. So uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing a lot with this editor and the content on the other channel is I'm not going to be positioning it as these big challenges. I'm going to be doing it purely from like an idea of like, Here's a game. I'm going to play a game. Game's fun. We do Stanley Parable kind of thing um, because it's going to be very hard to grow like that. But I think in the long term, it's much more lucrative to grow like that. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the reason uh, I I don't recommend this for everyone because obviously it's hard. But because I have stream scheme, I don't have to have this channel pump aggressively fast. Right. Like, um, for example, like uh, Nick, right, If, if you tried to do this, you would you would probably take a lot longer. Right. To do it the same way. I'm going to take a long time. But it wouldn't matter if you had your tech channel up and running. Yeah. Right? Like if you had a bunch of content out there funding you to do something extra, you can do something extra. Yes. Um, and so that'll be my big thing is is if I can keep stream scheme rolling and just keep giving this editor content to edit and make good, then consistently, consistency wise, here's my thing. I don't need much. I don't need many views, right? On YouTube, you really do not need many views to make this a consistent job. Yeah. Because if if you are getting, 
you know, 10,000 views per video and you release a video uh, every single week. That's a lot, right? You're, you're getting 5,000. That's a lot. A thousand is a lot. Yep. But I think people, as I said at the start, go into it with these big grandeur ideas. And so for me personally, my side channel, if it gets 500 views starting out, that's fucking sick. If it gets a thousand starting out, that's huge. And these things will snowball together. You know, you go look at like DB Geek. He doesn't do hardcore challenges or heavily SEO'd. No, he just uploads consistently and it's the same content with decent thumbnails and it keeps snowballing and people love it. And I think that's a big thing that I want to make sure I consistently remember is that my side channel doesn't need to be this aggressively optimized thing because again, I've got stream scheme, mm. but the side channel can just be me. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And if I can get to a thousand views per video and I unlock monetization and if Twitch shits the bed, then I've got a very good side channel that I can transition to. I don't want to, but I can easily go, hey, you know, to make up for the subs that I've lost by moving across, memberships are this amount and I'll probably have a much higher conversion rate to memberships than I do to people subbing to my Twitch channel, right? Again, I'm not saying I want to be a YouTube streamer. I don't. But if I'm covering bases, you don't need many views in order to make yourself sustainable yeah. when it comes to a YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah. That's is it. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, and I think people think like, oh, I need to be Mr. Beast level or Ludwig level. And it's like, no, don't look at them. Yeah. No, you know, go look at the DB geeks, right? Who are like 300 to 500 viewer average viewers on Twitch and they get decent viewership over there. Go look at the Northern Lions who just release consistent content, right? Look at people who are far more attainable, achievable and think about why that worked and be aware that it's hard. But if you can pull it off, you know, it's, it, you don't need many views to right. be successful. Yeah. yeah. That's just it's just because yeah the fact that like the YouTube monetization is actually pretty good so you can you can get by with with a uh, with a lot less <laughs> yeah um, well like I've got yeah. memberships on Stream Scheme right so people can sign up for a membership for four ninety nine and it's like uh, seventy thirty cut right and that's allowed it's not like a problem because you're allowed to have a YouTube channel it's just you can't stream on yep. multiple yep. but you can be a member to the YouTube channel and I, I've said multiple times you don't get anything for it. Um, but I've still got a few people who are members over there. Mm. Um, and there's also super thanks, for example. So people can literally donate directly to a video. They can just give money directly to it. Um, I haven't had it happen yet because I only turned it on this week. Um, but the way I look at it is like, it's kind of like creating a Patreon. Yep. Right? I'm making a YouTube channel that is like a Patreon where I'm just putting content out. And if people enjoy it, they can convert to it. And I have a safety net in case something goes wrong on Twitch. I hope it doesn't. But I've also got a fun little side project where I'm not aggressively trying to optimize every little thing until I want to like give up. And yep. the smart thing about that is it's already in the ecosystem that people want it to be in. They don't have to go to a you know other side. They can just be like, exactly. this is my direct contribution. Um, yep. Boys, this this well, week has been amazing. We I oh, was yeah, 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 do his yeah, talk, I didn't get a chance to. <laughs> oh, I'm so Nick sorry. Off. No, no, no. I was I was going to continue on and say I'm doing I, the call and reply. But, yeah, but Nick I hasn't said what he's doing this yet. week. Oh, but yeah, Nick, I, I guess I'll just go. I guess I, if you could just head on out. <laughs> well, yeah, usually yeah. when you're the person asks, I'm sorry. You know, yeah. I'm just gonna <laughs> kick him from the call. I'm the, I'm the server leader. I'm gonna kick him from the call. Yeah, yeah just get, yeah, out yeah, here, yeah, get him out of here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Continue. Um, so this week, I uh, tonight and tomorrow night are my last two uh, streams for the fundraiser that I've been doing for the past like week and a half for Game on Cancer. Um, we are $250 away from $3,000, which has been uh, the milestone wow. that, that we've set. So we are very, very, very close. Uh, I'll be streaming Outer Wilds tonight and tomorrow. And uh, we, we're kind of getting to the end point of, the, of that game, which is um, very exciting. And uh, rest of the week, new um, new uh, new Yu-Gi-Oh! season, new content's out. So that's going to be uh, be a lot of fun as the, as the week goes on uh, ahead. And also, after Outer Wilds, I'm going to be playing... Road ninety six, hey. as well. I I think it's going to be Classic. a fantastic tr transition from Outer Wilds, uh, and I think I'm very excited to give that a shot. That's be awesome. But also from like the back end side of things, I really want to spend a bit of time this week, go back to our podcast with Mads, and get some uh, good clips and TikToks from that, so we can put out. That's uh, that's something that I want to want to work on as well, and uh, general sort of like you know, still working on some stream stuff in the background, and and uh, and sort of prepping some stuff for YouTube as well. So lots, lots, lots to do, nice. but priorities, guys. Lots task lit. list, what we talk yes, about. Yes, the task list. <laughs> I apologize. Um, it's okay, Reaps, I will forgive you this time. I'm so sorry. I, I I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in a different zone. I was going to say that we've done two <laughs> two podcasts in two weeks, definitely. Um, yeah, not, not 11 hours. No, 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 not 11 hours. Not at all. 
Um, so whose whose turn is it? Because it was EO's last time, and then it's yours, Reepsy. It's mine. It is his Reeps. Yeah. Okay. So it goes. It goes. Reeps. Nick. Me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then guest goes after, or guest whoever is there. But yeah. So it was me, which means you're next, Reeps. Okay. So uh, I think the chat is going to say to us, um, "Hey, name of person. Did you hear the tides out? Okay. That's how they'll 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 go in here, and then okay. we go." Yeah, but I got an extra pair of budgie smugglers handy. That's our response. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the tide's <laughs> out. Hey, hey, hey. The tide's out, and we go. Yeah, but I got an extra pair of budgie smugglers handy. Okay. That's. I'm gonna okay. be. I'm gonna be okay. unique, and I'm gonna say, I'm not wearing any budgie smugglers, <laughs> and then do this. Yeah. <laughs> you could go with that. You could definitely. You could definitely go with that. Um, just have budgie yeah. smugglers in the response is all I'm gonna ask for. There we go. That's a good one. Easy. Are you writing this Go, down? I, I am. I absolutely <laughs> am. I'm fully admitting you it. You cheater eater. You can't write them down. That's not part of I it. Have not the to. I have to take meds because my memory's horrible. <laughs> we all have our things to deal with. I'm a fucking idiot. All right. There are three, there's We're three questions that we have to track right now. That's the yeah. That's the thing. There's three. That By the time true. we actually get to the week. No, it's okay. We've got wow, wow, we were. That was a hot one. Uh -huh. Which we reply back saying to them, mm. don't objectify us. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen for the next like four or five days. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then yep. Eona's episode. Yes. Which is going to say. Show dodos <laughs> one moment, please. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. Show dodos, and I and I think I said I wanted to be special. And I said yes, but you'll have to blur it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then now we've got um, the tide is out, but mm -hmm. I've got an extra pair of budgie smugglers. Yeah. Yep. Easy. Perfect. Okay. It's, uh, see, we've tracked it all perfectly. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, down, absolutely, with no help whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, boys, we are dropping frames. It's been another week. Again, if you've come this far, please leave the likes, leave the comments, do the subs, do the things, tell a friend, uh, everything like that. Very much appreciate it. But anything last you want to say before we head off, boys? You want to start off with the buys or something else? Tell your nan. Tell your nan. Okay. Tell your nan about the Stream Room podcast. Mm -hmm. And if the, the first person to tweet the, the podcast Twitter... With their nan saying, "I listen to the stream room." Okay, I will. I will gift you subs. I will go <laughs> if you are a streamer who is an affiliate. I will go to your stream and I will gift you subs that, if you tweet at us a video of your nan saying, "I listen to the stream room podcast." All right, I and, love I, this. and I watch the Twitter. I wa I watch the Twitter constantly. I'm always on top of that, so I will know. I'll let the I'll let L, well, the boys know straight away and let Elja like. Aren't We're practically giving you money and new viewers because Lord knows if I get a gifted sub, I go to that person's stream and check it out. Oh, so, I don't. If I get a gifted sub, I'm like, oh, stop pinging me. God, <laughs> absolutely awful. This mother. <laughs> yeah. Wait, um, so, so LJ, it's the first person, right? Only the first person to do it. Only the first person. Um, and I will, the amount of gifted subs you get depends on what I deem the quality of the uh, video to be. <laughs> if it is, if it is not very good quality, if it doesn't make me chuckle, yeah. you'll get five okay if it's good quality you might get six hey, there you go okay there that's you good. go that, this is big spender over here um boys we are dropping frames it is always a pleasure but for now we say bye-bye until next week bye-bye bye bye bye, bye. 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 bye.